Blog Talk Radio. What's going on, folks? It's your boy, Long Beach Joe, and I am back at it, back at it, back at it again. And let me tell you something. This is an exciting time. This is an exciting time. I am here to talk about the New York Jets. We're coming off of a big win against the Tennessee Titans, and boy, am I hyped. Boy, am I hyped, man. This was a win in OT, and let me tell you something. Everybody is fired up about it. So, I want to go ahead and get into the show. Listen, I am the man of the people. I am here for the people. Let me shamelessly promote my Facebook page. Everyone go on Facebook, search The Long Beach Joe Show. Like that page. My content's up there. Go ahead and give it a listen. Message me. I'll message you right back. I love going back and forth with folks about this football team. Also, leave me some feedback. I love hearing what you folks think I do here on The Long Beach Joe Show. So without further ado, folks, let's go ahead and get into the show. I am fired up. I'm fired up. And I cannot wait, man. Woo, let me tell you, this was an exciting game. An exciting game. Your boy's also on iTunes as well, Long Beach Joe Show on iTunes. Go to iTunes and see what's up with your boy, man. Go ahead and subscribe to our podcast on iTunes as well. You know, that's where the show audio goes. Go ahead and check that out. Subscribe on iTunes. And then guess what? Leave your boy a feedback, man. Leave me some feedback. I love hearing what you folks think, you know. I'm doing here. I want to hear about it. I get some feedback already. Salute to everybody, Mr. Magic, all the guys over there dropping feedback. I need more. I need to hear from more people about what I'm doing here. I'm also live as well on YouTube for those of you that do, uh, you know, want to see me live when uh, live when we live stream the show. Uh, go to YouTube, man. Long Beach Joe Jets. Long Beach Joe Jets on YouTube. You go there, subscribe, turn on your notifications. You know, so when we do the show live, hey, you'll be able to see it live. You know, so that's what I do. I broadcast on Blog Talk Radio as well, Long Beach Joe Show on Blog Talk Radio. But then you can see my beautiful face (laughs) on YouTube, you know, and we go back and forth. We don't just uh, do the show on YouTube as well. We also game. I also put content up as well, weekly videos, all kinds of things. So come join your boy on YouTube as well, Long Beach Joe Jets. And as well, for those of you that are watching me on YouTube, if you're watching the restream or the, the live stream or the broadcast, uh, you're watching the broadcast back, as you can clearly see, I have a pink shirt on. And y'all know you're saying to yourself, Joe, why do you have that shirt on? You look great in pink, but why are you wearing pink today? I'm wearing pink today because I stand with the Susie G. Coleman Foundation in fighting against breast cancer. That's what I do. That's what I do. This month, we're celebrating the fight against breast cancer, and we're bringing the fight to breast cancer. So for those of you that want to get involved with what I'm doing, I have a donation fundraiser up. In the chat, if you hit exclamation Coleman, exclamation point Coleman, that brings up the fundraiser. Anything that you can give would be greatly appreciated. For those of you that are listening, I have a link tree as well that is linked all across my social media platforms, you know, YoungJ000 on Twitter, uh, the Long Beach Joe Show on Twitter as well, my Facebook, The Long Beach Joe Show, all of those places, all of those formats. You can go there. Please, you know, donate if you can to my fundraiser. We're trying to raise about $250. I know it's a small amount, but, you know, it's what we can give. I've put quite a bit of my own money into it as well. So if you can, please find it in your hearts if you can to please give to my fundraiser a dollar, two dollars, you know, whatever you can give. It's all appreciated, and it all goes directly to the Susie G. Coleman Foundation. It is all about fighting breast cancer, bringing the fight to breast cancer, and also spreading breast cancer awareness. So that's what it's all about here. So with that said and put to the side, I am coming to talk to you folks today (laughs) about this game, man. Jets, Titans, there was a lot of concerns going into this football game, a lot of concerns about this Jets team. We were all wondering, hey, you know, how we were going to perform. There were many concerns about our pass rush, many concerns about, you know, a lot of things that was going on with this football team. But boy, oh boy, did the New York Jets show out. Did they show out, okay? This this game, this Jets team stepped up. This young Jets team, I think, is starting to turn a corner. They really fought hard, got themselves back into a game, and it starts, for me, with the defense. This defense was phenomenal from beginning to end. Beginning to end, they were phenomenal, okay? And I'm going to give them all their props. One of the biggest question marks we had going into the season was what? Hey, who's going to be our pass rusher? Carl Lawson has gone down. 
We're going to have to have a pass rush by committee. What's, what are we going to do? Everything's going to fall apart. This defense against the Titans offense, this defense had seven total sacks, seven. They were mauling, mauling Ryan Tannehill all day long. Every single time he dropped that he had somebody around him or somebody in his face, somebody in his face, guys putting it together defensively. C.J. Mosley, anybody that doubted him, I remember. I remember the doubt. I remember this offseason. Let's keep it real. There were people talking about trading him. There were some Jets fans that wanted to move on from him. It was all kind of things going on, right? Guess what? C.J. Mosley stepped up, 13 total tackles. Had a sack as well. He was flying around out there. Quincy Williams, a guy that Joe Douglas picked up, right? We were looking to see, okay, we got some injuries in linebacker position. Let's see what this kid can do. He was released. We were able to get him. This guy was all over the place, all game long. His pass rushing ability, his impact in the game was clearly felt, clearly. 12 total tackles as well. Had a sack. He was everywhere, flying around. Quentin Williams. I was another guy coming into this game. We were saying to ourselves, we were all scratching our heads like, we know that Quinnen's good. He's just coming back from that foot injury. We're seeing he's putting things together out there. He's playing well, but can this be a game where he dominates? How dominant is he going to be against this, against this Titans offensive line? And we saw it. He was throwing guys around. He was causing disruption. He was causing problems as well. He had two sacks on the day. You know what's crazy? Quinnen Williams, Quincy Williams, for those of you that don't know, they're actually brothers. <laughs> They're real brothers in real life. They're the first brothers with a sack in the same game on the same team since 1982. That's, you know, since the stat has started to be tracked. Those guys played phenomenal, man. John Franklin Myers, a guy that we've been talking about since this offseason, he was flying around as well. He was out there, you know, making his presence felt. He seemed unblockable at points during this game. He was giving that Titans offensive guard all he could handle. These guys, this this defense, this defensive front in particular was just manhandled, was mauling, was unrelenting. They came up with key stops. Now, yes, our offense sputtered at, at, at the start, but let me tell you something. This defense was very bend but don't break, and they were banging Ryan Tannehill around all day. They only gave up three field goals by the half. The, the score was only nine to seven at the half. Michael Carter, the second, played well. Here's another young corner really stepping up, really playing well for us. He looked amazing out there. Huff was amazing as well. He had a sack and a half. He looked good. My guy, Bryce Hall, pass breakups. He, he was sticking his nose everywhere that it belonged. I call him the hater. He breaks up everything. He's a hater. He's not trying to see nobody get any type of big yard. This defense played so well the entire game. It was unbelievable. And, again, we were without Marcus May. That was a big question mark. We'll be talking about Marcus May in just a second, sadly. Again, the number is 515-602-9639. Lines are hot. We'll get to the callers in just a second. Man. But I'll tell you what, the safeties that we had, Colbert and Adrian and, and Wilson, Adrian Colbert and Gerard Wilson, that was a big question going into this game. Well, what are we going to look like without Marcus May back there? Are these safeties really going to be able to step up? There was questions about Sulla. Hey, you know, we know that Sulla can make his adjustments. Will he make the proper adjustments? Will these guys know where they're supposed to play? And they played very well. They were very solid. Now, Gerard did have one penalty, a defensive pass interference on a fourth and ten, which extended – you know, a, a drive for the Titans, which eventually led to a score, which, you know, that penalty was kind of borderline. I'm going to keep it real. But let me tell you something. They played extremely well back there, extremely well. This defense mauled the Titans. And, yes, Derrick Henry had 157 yards in a TD, but they played hard. They played hard, and he was delivering hits, and so were they. Usually other teams, they, they fold when they play against Derrick Henry. No, this defense brought it to him. You want to hit? So do I. There was Quincy Williams was trying to run through him. Any time that Quincy Williams saw him and could get a straight up, he was trying to run through him. So was Mosley. Everybody, when they saw Henry get the ball in his hands, they immediately attacked him. They immediately attacked him. They were not afraid of him. They were not going to allow this guy to impose his will. 
This defense was phenomenal. This defense was phenomenal. And again, it was without Marcus May. I'm telling you, this defense is going to be scary. When we get Lawson back, and again, LaMarcus Joyner, all these, when we get these guys back next season, this defense is going to be something else. Now you go to the offensive side of the ball quickly. It was sputtering at the start. We were a little bit worried. You know, there was some questionable play calls by LaFleur. We were wondering what was going on, all right? Who's was going on, what was happening. But late in the second quarter, they were able to get themselves a touchdown. Carter was able to scramble in, get himself a touchdown. That's when you started to see the momentum start to kind of shift a little bit offensively. We started to pick up something. We started to really get going. And let me tell you something. When they came out after that half, I'll call Zach Wilson the magician. That's what I'm calling him from now on. This guy was phenomenal. Phenomenal, okay? To me, there's, there's three plays when I watched him. Again, he was 20, uh, 21 of 34 on the day, 297 yards, two TDs. He had an interception. We'll discuss that interception, Corey Davis. We'll discuss that in a second. Three plays that he had that I thought were unbelievable. One of them, to me, really showed how poised he was in the face of, of danger, when things face of chaos, when things weren't going as well as they should. There was one snap that he got. It was kind of a bad snap. He bobbled it a little bit, fell to the ground. He was able to pick it up, look around, and find a guy to keep some yardage going. I thought that was an unbelievable play because he also kind of evaded a rusher and was able to get it out. A lot of rookie quarterbacks, they bobble a snap, it goes down. Either it's a fumble and the defense ends up getting it, they just kind of give up on it. Or they just fall on it and take a loss. No, he said, listen, this was bad. I'm going to pick this up. I'm going to make this good. There was another play where he's throwing the ball to Keelan Cole, evading pressure again, Wilson rolling out, making it happen. When everything's falling down around him, he just finds a way. He went out there. He evading pressure, throws a bomb down to Keelan Cole. Keelan Cole's able to catch the football and get down. That was an unbelievable play, man. This kid has unbelievable arm talent, and we consistently see this week in and week out. Week in and week out, we see that Zach Wilson, with the flip of the wrist, can get the ball from here to to Kansas. (laughs) He's throwing the ball from Jersey to California. I'm telling you, it is insane how unbelievably talented he is. So unbelievable in this game. He takes the snap, he, he drops back, there's pressure in his face again, he evades pressure again, rolls to his right, he's playing backyard football, he sees Corey Davis, he tells Corey Davis, go long. He just waves, dude, go out, just go. And he let go a rocket for a 53-yard bomb, a 53-yard touchdown. And you started to see this offense really get its synergy, really come together, really start flowing, really start getting some momentum. Zach Wilson is unbelievable, man. This kid is talented. He's talented, and he's got it. We've just got to make sure that the pieces are are right. Our offensive coordinator has got to step up, okay? I'm keeping it real. Mike LaFleur did kind of clean up his play calling going into that that uh you know that that second that late second quarter after that after the half he did clean it up a bit there was a horrific play call though I will say on third and one Titans goal line that was a terrible play call with Wilson on that bootleg that was awful thought it was awful and we'll talk about that tonight we're gonna discuss a lot of things that was horrific okay that was terrible but. He's got to start attacking early. You can clearly see that Zach Wilson, what he wants to do is push the ball down the field. That's, that's what he's built to do, dog. He wants to throw the ball down the field. He wants to light it up. So we've got to start putting people – we've got to start calling plays to put people in position to do that more. Speaking of attacking, Corey Davis, listen, everyone knows I love Corey Davis. When things are going wrong in my life, that's who I call. My car had an issue, I called Corey Davis. I went outside, you know, I saw some cracks in the semen. I was like, man, we really need to clean these streets up around here. I just called Corey Davis. There was a plumbing issue at my house. I called Corey Davis. I went in my refrigerator. I was looking around. I was trying to make myself a sandwich. I was like, man, I don't have any cheese. I called Corey Davis. Anytime something's going wrong in my life, I just pick up the phone and call Corey Davis. Now, Corey Davis was a little bit inconsistent, particularly early in this football game. He had a bad drop. 
right? A ball that he that was a little bit behind him, but he should have been able to catch that, right? He dropped that football. Then he slipped on a route, which caused the interception from Zach Wilson. And everybody was like, come on, Corey, you got to step up. These are bad plays that's happening. Come on now. But let me tell you something. Corey Davis turned it around. He turned it around. Like I said, that 53-yard bomb, things started to really turn around. He started to make some catches. Corey Davis put it together, man. Once he got hot, once things started going after the rough start, he had four catches, 111 yards, and a TD. And let me tell you something. Corey was open a little bit more in this game. And he could have got more catches. He could have got more yards. He could have got fed more. Zach Wilson missed him on a couple plays, which is going to happen. But Corey Davis has got to be more consistent. The drops have got to stop. Because let me tell you something. This offense clearly is built for this to get this guy the ball. It truly, truly is. Keelan Cole had a solid day as well. I was thoroughly impressed with uh, Jamison Crowder, too, coming back. He was nice. He had himself a TD. This offense, after that sputtering start, really was able to step up. Really, really, really liked what the offense did. Now we're going to talk a little bit about Marcus May. Because right after the win, guess what happened? The news about Marcus May comes out. For those of you that don't know, Marcus May dealing with charges from a DUI arrest that happened on February 22nd. Uh, He was charged with a DUI, two more misdemeanors as well, DUI damage to property. And also, you know, leaving the scene of a crash. Uh, you know, Marcus May was in a 2018 Mercedes. He hit the back rear of a Volvo. There was no injury. It happened on, a, on the North Florida Turnpike. It's unclear, uncertain at this point, whether it was reported to the Jets or not. But I'll tell you what, um, <laughs> the media wasn't, didn't report it. It wasn't reported to the media as well. So there's question marks there, which that could lead to some issues too. This is just tough, man. And this, again, this all happened two weeks before he was voted team MVP in 2022. In 2020, excuse me. This is tough, man. This is a tough situation for Marcus May. It's a tough situation for this football team. And I'm going to speak about it tonight. He's got to be smarter than this. He's got to be smarter than this. And everyone knows I love Marcus May. I love what he brings to this football team. He's got to, he's got to think, man. For anyone that's listening, if you're ever in a situation where the night's getting away from you, you know, you've had a couple couple of drinks, call a taxi, you know, call an Uber, call somebody else to come pick you up. Don't put yourself in this situation. That's what upsets me the most about this. It's like, Marcus, you got to be smarter than this, man, you know. But when you get away from, you know, the lives that you possibly could have endangered, the crash, all those things, then you look at the situation, okay, what does it mean for the New York Jets? Well, there's major question marks now, right? Major question mark. Because there's a suspension that could come. Again, this is going to, you know, we're all going to figure out what's going on because he does have a Zoom meeting, a Zoom court meeting on October 20th. So that's when things will, you know, really be set in stone and figured out the legal, you know, as far as the legal process. You know, if he's if he does face a suspension, then guess what? He's already out three to four weeks with that ankle injury. He could face an even lengthier suspension than that, right? Depending on when they levy it, whether they levy it this year or whether they levy it next year, he's going to be facing some time. And, again, we've seen the NFL really, really take it to guys that get, up, get caught up in things like DUIs, right? Then you look at the situation, hey, he's in a contract dispute with the New York Jets, right? We've seen this. He's been franchised this year. He wasn't happy about it. His agent went off on social media. He's also said things about, hey, I don't want to be franchised next year as well, which the Jets have an option to do. So now what do you do with him? Do you sign him? With this situation going on, you know, do you sign him? Do you sign a guy? Do you got, give a guy big money that has question marks about now his character? And, again, I know, you know, May's been a model citizen up until this point. But, again, when, you, when things like this happen, this is what you have to think of as a general manager. Can I trust this guy if I give this guy big money? Is he a guy that I feel will make smart decisions? Or could he put himself in this position again later on and I end up, you know, Missing out on him again, missing time off the field, having a guy that's going to be around. Now we're stuck with him because we gave him money. That's a question I'm going to be asking you folks tonight. Also, some of people were looking to trade Marcus May. That was understandable. There was a lot of people screaming about that too. Well, hey, if you're looking to trade Marcus May, the market, the value, as far as, tra- as, far as collateral you'll get back, I'm sure it's gone down now because guess what? 
uh, <laughs> he's got a DUI on him. He's going to be facing a suspension. That market has definitely gone down. That market has definitely gone down. What kind of compensation do you think you're going to get back now, even if a team was looking at giving you a second-round pick, right? With a DUI possibly missing time, will they still give you a second-round pick? I don't know about that. I don't know about that. So we're going to be discussing that tonight. Again, we're so fired up about the win, but the situation with Marcus May, and again, we're going to be talking about the Falcons game tonight as well that we got coming up. Going to do a preview on that. Can't wait to get into it. Listen, 515-602-9639, 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. We are taking all callers. Salute to all the savages in the chat, okay? Salute to all my savages. Why? Because they're savages. They're savage. And they remain savage. They will remain savage. You want to know why I call my chat the savages? Because they get after everybody. They are pure savage. It doesn't matter who you are. They're going to get after you. Now, we're going to get to these lines again. Everybody, please be patient. Lines are hot. 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. First caller I'm going to, 813-813. I'm coming directly to you. 813, salutes. I want to thank you for calling in. You're looking like a new caller. Give me your name, where you're from, and give me your thoughts on this New York Jets team beating the Titans. How excited were you after this football game? Good evening, Joe. How are you? What's going on, my friend? Hey, Joe. So uh, I'm always in your YouTube uh, blogs. Um, First-time caller. Okay. And I'm the person who uh, picked the score 24-20 Jets last week. Okay. 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 Give me your name. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, um, figured I'd call in this time. Um, I'm stoked, beyond excited. Um, I believe a couple of things that haven't been mentioned too much. Maybe the solidification of the offensive line. I mean, it's mentioned a little bit, but um, they did, you know, they were decent against Carolina, but I think they were much better um, against the Titans. Uh, especially in the run game. Um, Zach, you did mention Zach well with this, but especially um, he has You're that pocket presence. Okay, I'm mm-hmm. sorry. You were breaking up a bit. You were breaking up a bit. Oh, Go sorry, ahead. Joe. Sorry, Joe. I'm just walking around here. Um, he's got the pocket presence, um, probably elite pocket presence. Just the movement, the fluidity, um, you know, the footwork, the, of course, yeah. the act. It's just, I mean, and then, and I happen to be watching a game with um, a Cowboy fan, and I'm thinking, and he was like, oh, my gosh, the, the Cowboys, um, I mean, the Cowboys offense is, forget it. But he was like, oh, my God, your defense is good. And I said, yeah, our defense is very good. I mean, and that's yeah. with a lot of, such a young team. I mean, the upside with this team is just unbelievable. It can be, it can only go up from here. Sorry, Joe. Yeah, yeah. It, Not it, trying it to take over no, the listen. Show. <laughs> no, listen, I, and I hear you. I, I'm excited as you are as well. Uh, like you said as well, Zach Wilson played phenomenally. And one of the things that I was really impressed with was his ability to improvise, right? When things are breaking down around him, he's not a statue in the pocket. He'll extend a play with his feet, get outside, you know, and find somebody. And one of the guys that I was really impressed with by, as he rebounded from some, you know, some bad plays he made earlier, was Corey Davis. What are your thoughts about him in the day that he had? I thought Corey Corey was excellent. I mean, he just uh, I mean he's he's steady and I mean um, he basically that that I think that overtime throw that they had I don't know if that was overtime was is that the one where they, they did the sideline one? Uh, yeah, there was the 53 yard bomb. I, think, I don't think that that was a time. Uh, yeah, I'm here. The 53 oh, that wasn't yard him? bomb. Okay. No, that wasn't. That was before, I believe. No, not that one. The sideline uh, yeah, bomb. There, there was a maybe like a 30 yard Cole, out to I, the corner. Yeah, I think it was the Cole. Yeah, it's a Keelan Cole. I think that was. Oh, that was yeah, Cole. That was Cole. You're right. You're right. Yeah, that was Cole. You're right. Mm-hmm. Going out of bounds. Yeah, yeah. gotcha. Got mixed up. He was absolutely. Yeah, he was absolutely phenomenal. Um, you know, I thought Corey Davis rebounded well. I thought his arm strength showed oh, yeah. well. I thought he looked really, really good. So my next question for you is, 
What are your thoughts about this situation mm-hmm. with Marcus May? I thought Marcus May would be traded regardless, but now I don't know. I mean, I just – like you said, you, you're not going to get much value for, from him uh, for, for mm-hmm. a trade. Plus, you never – I don't think they were honestly going to sign him. I, I never thought mm-hmm. they were going to sign him, get the big money. Because um, yeah. I know – they're thinking, you know, three-year rebuild no matter what. Uh, although, to me, I'm thinking if they can beat Atlanta, I'm already thinking about the, the game after the bye against New England. They could yeah. be three and three. I hate to get too far ahead, but I, I yeah. watched the Atlanta game on um, NFL Network replay, mm-hmm. and it was it was the Cordell Patterson show. You know, it's yeah. basically yeah. Cordell kick return, Cordell screen, Cordell running out of the backfield. I mean, I yes, was like – you know, um, that's – I mean, if we can contain him – my my only concern on the defense is the screen – this defending the screen, which I think we can clean up, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Um, we gave up so many yards to the Titans on the screen pass. Um, but, yep. the, I mean, our defense just played phenomenal. And, Shel, you know, Sheldon Rankins, to me, is a guy who's a little – you know, kind of pushing the pocket. So, you know, uh, Quincy and Quinnen, uh, you know, Quinnen can feed, but I think Sheldon Rankins is kind of not getting the sacks, but he's he's a he's a presence in the po- in you know, pushing the pocket for sure. Yeah, he's causing the disruption, so, causing issues that's benefiting those that are getting the sacks. Absolutely. I see your point oh, yeah. there. And so my next, my next oh, question yeah. for you, man, because you're, you're bringing the heat right now. I want to talk to you about this Falcons game just a little bit. So my next question and final mm-hmm. question for you is, when you look at, you know, this game is going to be in London. As we all know, we'll all be watching it together. I'm telling you all right now. we will be here. <laughs> we'll all be watching it together. No doubt. How concerned, how concerned are you about the Jets coming out kind of sluggish, right? We've seen different things, especially young teams on the road. Sometimes they do. How concerned are you about this team coming out sluggish since this game is so far away? Uh, I... I don't know. I think they can kind of build on what they what they that they're starting um, to get you know the maybe a little bit of momentum from the win. I don't I don't think they're overhyped. I think I mean you're going to see a uh, Elijah Moore back possibly. Um, mm-hmm. You know Michael Carter running has been solid. I just think they're starting to gel a little bit more. So I'm looking at the upside more than the the travel. I mean Atlanta's got to travel. I I think Matt that Atlanta offense is not explosive. They're they were kind of you know, doing a lot of um, uh, screen passes and, you know, slants and things like that, sort of like the Titans, really. So I think we just have to tackle well and not give up the big play. And sorry, Joe, one more thing about the um, – you mentioned uh, Derrick Henry. The, the fact yeah. that they held him the 50 yards of rushing for the whole key to the game. Because if, yeah. that, if yeah. that guy went off for 100 or 120 in the first half, they would have had touchdowns instead of field goals. Yeah. Yeah, and again, we were very bend but don't break. We didn't give up too much. So my next yep. question for you is my final question for you because let me tell you something. Again, you're bringing the heat. When you look at this this Falcons defense, they still got Dante Fowler out there. How concerned are you about his pass rush and ability attacking and getting some rush on Wilson? Yep. Well, I'm I'm really not that concerned with. Uh, I mean, I think he's growing. I mean, it's only one game. I know I'm not trying to get too far ahead, but I think he kind of is getting what he has to do to 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 win a game, um, you know, to manage a game, to know when to to press and when to pull back. I mean, you know, he's going to have his moments of, of negativity, yeah. but I think he's yeah. kind of growing as a quarterback. And you know, Lafleur, I, I I saw that he did a play. I don't know, his first or second quarter. He called the play to Berrios. It was like a fake end around, and, he, and Wilson, like, flipped it to him, to Berrios, and yep. Berrios got nine yards. And, like, okay, so there's, they're going to start opening up things here and letting him go a little bit more because I think they were a little too – first couple of weeks they were kind of, you know, let's take it easy, let's not do too much. And that offensive line wasn't, wasn't helping him. But I think this is maybe the time to build on. And like I said, I'm looking – I'm looking for three and three. If we can go to London and win, uh, we we get a bye. We play the Patriots. We should have beaten the Patriots first game, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, we should have been at least well, I mean, close. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, you know, you gotta you gotta go out there and get it done. <laughs> That's the big thing for me. I exactly. Hear you, you gotta go out there and you exactly. gotta get it done. So exactly. this, this football you know, this football team though is really starting to pick up its place. 
pick up his pace. And like you said, I'm hoping that the offense opens up more going forward. They've got to take this leash off of, off of Zach and allow him to do what he does best. Get the ball down the field. Start attacking. You know, start attacking. Start throwing the ball. And, again, Mims was playing. We Absolutely. didn't see, you know, him be able to get a catch or get anything going. But I want to see more offensive weapons utilized going forward, Mims being main, mainly one of them. So I got to get back to mm-hmm. these lines, man. Mm-hmm. My final question before I let you go, go ahead and give me your sure. score prediction for the Jets-Falcons game, man. Who do you think wins? Who oh, God, I'm going to be right lead? again. <laughs> I got to be go right ahead. again. Okay, here we go. Not for Vegas purposes. Okay, hold on, Joe. Uh, it could you know there is a time change? They'll be playing early. Uh, twenty-one eighteen. I'll make it ugly. Twenty-one eighteen Jets. They're definitely going to beat the Falcons. Oh. They can put out, right, come out and play. Them the no issue. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, Joe. That's what I'm. Oh. Yes, all right, sir. listen, man. I want to thank you for calling in. Next time I have a show, I want to hear from you. All right, my friend. You have a good one. All right, Joe. I'll be in the blog, too. Take All right, man. All right. Listen, we are fired up. 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. We are taking all callers. The lines are hot. We're going to get to everybody. Next, I'm going to my guy, Chris. Chris, Chris, Chris. Salute. I want to thank yeah. you for calling in today. It's good to speak to you, my friend. Listen, Chris, give me your thoughts about this game. Give me your thoughts about this Jets win against the Titans. How excited are you for our defense? Well, like I mentioned before, Joe, we Mm -hmm. slaughtered the Titans. The scout regiment Mm -hmm. has done it again. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Now, for my favorite type of play of the defense was Mm -hmm. how the William twins did their thing. They sacked Tannehill. I don't know who who sacked him the most. But those mm-hmm. two, they're a powerhouse duo. Again, I'm referring yeah. to the William twins. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the Williams brothers. Yeah, listen, they, they got after it. They got after it, especially Quincy. Uh, this was a guy that, again, we signed, we brought in. I don't think a lot of people really expected this type of impact from him. I don't think anybody really did. I thought everybody thought, hey, he's going to come in. We were all kind of questioning what he would bring to the defense. This dude has played dominant this year. He really has. Um uh, we saw him all over the place against the Titans. I mean, this guy was in ev- damn near every play, it seemed like. He was all over Ryan yeah, Tannehill. Hill. He was absolutely, yeah, he, he was absolutely harassing him. I love the pressure and passion that he brought to this football game. Now, there's another linebacker as well that we got to talk about, Chris, because there's a lot of people that doubted him. I'm just saying. I remember people telling me, you know, he ain't played two games, two years, Joe. Two games, two years. You know? Just saying, people told me two games, two years, Joe. It really don't matter. You know, we'll see. There was people talking about trading them before the season started. All these things were going on. Now we're watching C.J. Mosley just absolutely flourish out here. I mean, absolutely flourish. You saw him flying around making plays. He had a sack as well. What are your thoughts about his play in this football game, man? I think he's the same guy that he play, that he is when he was with the Ravens. I mean, from mm. the way I've shared, the way he, he rushed in and the way I've seen his defense, again, I didn't see the game, but I saw the highlights, and, man, that guy was a bulldozer. <laughs> he, couldn't mm. even, he couldn't even get through. He, he, he took down Tannehill like it was nothing. It's like Tannehill was playing for Adam Gaze again. He had nothing. His offensive line was all over the place. <laughs> yeah, hey, listen, I'm telling you, he was flying around. He was flying around. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about this Marcus May situation, man. What are your thoughts about his DUI arrest? Are you a guy that's looking to move on from May at this point? I didn't know. Honestly, I didn't know about the DUI situation. I thought it was just another rumor that they put out. But I guess from mm-hmm. based on what you're telling me, it must, it must be confirmed. Um, oh yeah, I'm kind of surprised. Mm-hmm. It, I'm kind of surprised. I didn't ex- I didn't expect that from him. And you know what? Yeah. The weird thing is, how can someone get a DUI with an ankle injury, which doesn't make any sense. Unless I don't know. I don't know the whole story. Well, so he, forgive me. If, no, no. He he got it. He got it in uh, in February. He got it in February uh, 2020. Oh. So that's when he had it. He he didn't just recently get it at all. He got it in February 2020. But there's a lot of people, especially a lot of fans that. 
you know, are kind of ready to move on from him at this point. There was fans ready to move on from him when everything was going on with him and his agent. So you look at this situation, and it's like, man, <laughs> it's tough because you would think that Marcus wouldn't, you know, get himself caught up in something like this. And especially when you look at the impact that it has on the Jets. Now you've got big question marks about this guy going forward. Is he going to make, you know, solid decisions if you decide to re-sign him? You know, can you trust him with more money? Can you trust him to be, you know, a guy for you in the locker room now? There's a lot of questions, especially with this DUI situation. A lot of questions. The suspension, okay. how long is it going to be? There's questions about if it was reported, you know, to the, because it's still kind of unclear whether the Jets knew about it or whether, if, if it, whether it was even reported to the NFL. It's still uncertain and unclear if it was reported to the NFL properly. There was just so many questions about this situation with Marcus, so many. Man, it's, it's really, really tough, but we'll see what happens going forward. So my next question for you, man, and my final question for you, is: you look at this game upcoming with the Falcons, do you think that this defense will be able to continue to get a pass rush in this game against the, against the, you know, the, the Falcons quarterback, Matt Ryan, do you think this defense will be able to get after will. him of the same way will. we got after of Ryan Shanahan? Of course they okay. will. And, I, and oh. Now, here it is. You're going to love this, Joe. Listen, mm-hmm. you do me a favor. Could you sound that alarm for me? Because I'm about to make a big announcement about that defense. Okay, okay. Well, one second. Let me, let me go ahead. Let me go ahead and get it. Let me go ahead and get that for you. Let me sound that for you. We're sounding. Let's go. It's a sound. Let's go. Matt. Matt Ryan is going to get sacked eight times four by the William Twins. Okay. Okay. I respect that. I respect that. So give me your final score, uh, your final score prediction between the Jets. 35 35 to seven, Jets. Oh, a 35 to seven. Listen, Chris, I want to thank you for calling in, man. You go ahead and have yourself a good night, all right? One question for you. Oh, go ahead. One question for you. Go ahead. Since the game is going to be in the morning, I don't know how your Mm -hmm. timeline will work because you're in the West. So Mm -hmm. would you let us know um, when when you'll be able to watch the game with us? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'll be watching. I just, I, yeah, I said earlier today, I will absolutely be watching the game with you folks. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah, so okay. we'll, we'll, we'll right, tell you. We're going to get it. All right, you have a good one, Chris. Likewise, my friend. Have a good one. All right. Listen, we're going to keep getting to these lines. Again, 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in, Okay. Call in. We are taking all callers. The lines are hot. The lines are open. So we're going to keep getting to these lines. Again, 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Also, please like the stream if you can. Please subscribe if you have not subscribed. Turn on your notifications so when I post content, you folks will be in the know. So next, we're getting to my guy, 973-973. We're coming directly to you. Chris, Steve, we'll get to you folks in a second. 973, we're coming directly to you. Listen, I want to thank you for calling in today, man. Give me your thoughts about this thank Jets you. defense. What were your thoughts about the dominant performance they put on against the Falcons? I'll say one word for this first. Hallelujah. We got the win finally. <laughs> Although it was against, you know, it was against, you know, a bunch of birds, you know, the Falcons. I mean, the Falcons are, you know, pathetic at best. So if we didn't win this game, there had to be a lot of questions that had to be answered. Why can we beat this team? So I'm just glad we got that off our backs. Thank you very much. Though the victory, yeah, I mean, of we, course, I, was overshadowed yeah. by Mayor, you know, I mean, with his I, DUI. So that did put a damper on the victory. So, mm-hmm. you know, in a way it's like, you know, okay, we got the victory, but then we got this problem to deal with now. I mean, as if we've been through enough already, you know, within the off season, you know, after the Jets losing uh, one of their own, and actually, mm-hmm. and now we got this. So it's either every time, every week, get a bit of good news, we're going to get a bunch of bad news to go with it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Listen, I hear you. So now I want to talk it's to you sad. a little bit about this Falcons game. Let me ask you about this Falcons yeah. game. How could, how worried are you about Cordell Patterson? Because we see him utilized all over the place with the Falcons. Hmm. Well, if it's against the Falcons, I shouldn't be too worried about it. I mean, but like I said, if we couldn't beat them, you know, then I don't think we would deserve to win any game this year because if we can't beat a lowly team like that, who can we beat? You yeah. Know? No, look, I mean, I, look yeah, I, the Falcons has, are NFL. You could, beat the, 
I look at the yeah. situation and I said, if they're a tough team, you know, to play, I, I get it. everybody thinks we're just going to roll them. But, you know, we still got to go out there mm-hmm. and make sure that these guys, that we keep these guys in check. Because, again, this game's in London. There's time differences. Mm-hmm. We, the mm-hmm. NFL, every Sunday, any, any team can win on Sunday, all right? So you got to make yeah. sure we don't get too cocky and we keep our heads about ourselves. We got to go out there, focus on this Falcons team. They yeah, have no. weapons. Kyle Pitts, Ridley, they have guys that can go out there and really get it done. So, look, I hear you. I understand we're high from this win. I'm excited as well, but I want to stay laser-focused, too. So, before I let you go, go ahead and give me your final score prediction for this game upcoming against the Jets and the Falcons. Who do you think wins? Who do you think loses? What do you think the score is going to be? Jets should win. Jets, I feel they have more confidence now. I mean, they can beat the the Falcons. This should be a laugher uh, from one here for the other callers. I'm going to say... 163 to 2. No, no. Um, 42-10. 42-10 Jets. All right. I hear you. Yeah. I respect yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And, again, I want to thank him for calling in. That was a phenomenal take. He brought his heat. We're going to keep getting to these lines. Again, 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. Next, I'm going to my guy, Chris, man. We're going directly to Chris. I want to hear from this guy, man. Chris, I want to thank you for calling in. Give me your thoughts on this game against the Titans, man. How did you feel about the way that this offense was able to rebound from some struggles early? I want all my Jets fans first to stand up and say a good old J-E-T-S, Jets, 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 baby, way to go! Let's go. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. That's how I want to see our season go. I know it took a couple of games, but I'm really happy. I've kept my faith in Robert Sala. All gas, no break. Seeing the defense, not letting it up one bit at a time. They, they held the game for us. Zach Wilson coming in with the talent that we knew he had, and he's been saying it, and we've been talking about it at practice, and we got to see it out in the field, baby. This team played hard. They played strong, and we made it all the way to overtime, and we finished strong. Man, yes, we got a little bit of love from the football guys, but at the same time, we held our own. Let's go! Absolutely, absolutely. I'm fired up. I'm fired up, Chris. You got to be fired up. Now, Chris, look, uh, the, the defense was unbelievable. Like you said, it was a big time win in overtime. We were able, you know, they, they missed the kick, so we were able to get on, get ourselves a W first win of the season. We're all hyped up. And then we get the news about Marcus May, man. What are your thoughts about his situation with the DUI arrest? Are you a guy that's ready? Do you think that the New York Jets should just move on from him at this point and try to trade him before the deadline? It definitely seems that way, just based on hearing from his agent, hearing his his reactions on interviews and his relationship with the team and his responses to everything, Mm -hmm. hearing about the conversations with Joe Douglas on the contract, knowing how he already, how they were feeling about the fact that when they franchise tagged him, the original so so air quoted uh, note that Joe Douglas was offering him a contract just 20% less than what the franchise tag was going to be. You know, yeah. I can only presume that knowing that this was just hearing this for the first time from you, that it was last year, a situation, a report that we still are just now hearing about it. I feel like this yeah. is just Marcus's way of saying I'm stepping out the door. Now, the only thing I can say is this for sure. If that's really the case, Joe Douglas must take advantage as soon as possible. We have him under franchise tag. Players will eventually need a guy with talent like Marcus May, yes, he's going to mm-hmm. deal with his uh, consequences. Yes, his value does seem detrimental. But there are teams that have, you know, taken advantage of players in that situation that needed that extra help, especially on defense and on safety. We could always send mm-hmm. Marcus May along with, you know, a Mr. Uh, Jamal Adams because it's not looking like the Seahawks' <laughs> defense are doing too hot either. So, you know, send us another – Second round pick, if you'd like. <laughs> yeah. No. Listen. Listen. I hear you, Chris, and I'm right. I'm right there with you, dude. I, you know, I understand those fans that want to move on from him, especially now that this situation has come out. And again, they're still, you know, they're still coming out about things and just how the situation is going to happen. And again, that zooming will be on the 20th. 
Uh, so we'll see how it all plays out, you know, as far as the legal side. But there's a lot of fans that are saying, hey, it's time to move on from him. We're ready to go. You know, they wanted to move on from him with the, when the stuff started with the agent. So I understand your take there. Now, going on to this Falcons game, man, my next question for you is, how concerned are you about this Falcons offense with Pitts, man? This is a big, you know, tight end, a guy that can move. How concerned are you about us matching up with him as far as our ability to cover him? I have so much respect for this coaching staff and the defense that we are leading right now. We knew coming in against the Titans that Henry, yes, the Titans had a fall, had some weaknesses on a uh, wide receiver, but we knew that their biggest weapon was Henry. And we yeah. still kept them down to 100, where a lot of people, even myself, expected Henry to go beyond 100 yards, and he still yeah. hit his mark. So what yeah. I believe the defense is going to do is just play it smart, They're going to tell their defense, look, this is where we need you guys to go ahead and bring on the pressure. We need to focus our main players here. And our secondaries are doing amazing. And I really think that's all because of our defensive linemen. The pressure, the Williams sack exchange. When we go to London, I expect the the team to bring back a trip, a big old heavy dead bird in a green sack bag because we're bringing back the sack exchange, baby, and the William brothers are going to hold it up. That's what I'm telling you right there. That's what I'm talking about, Chris. So my final question before I let you go, man, give me your final score prediction for the game. Who do you think, who do you, who do you think wins? Who do you think loses? How do you think the game is going to end, man? I think poor Matty Ice is going to feel a little hot and heated up in London because the defense is going to bring him down to only one touchdown. And Zach Wilson is going to bring in some magic with bringing in 24 on the mark. Jets winning 24 to 7. Let's go, J E D S Jets. That's what I'm saying. Listen, Chris, I got to get back to these lines, man. These lines are hot. I want to thank you for calling in, my friend. I can't wait to hear from you on the next show, bro. Woo! Right, let's go. Let's go. Chris is fired up, man. He's always fired up. Salute to everybody again. 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. Wherever you're watching me from, please, you know, give the stream. If you're watching me on YouTube, please subscribe subscribe to the stream. Also, please give the stream a thumbs up as well. It's greatly appreciated. Also, share the stream, too. You know what I'm saying? I always love meeting new people, seeing everybody, you know, come in and say, hey, I, I found this stream. I was able to bring in. Thank you so much for all of you that share the stream. Please continue to do that. It's greatly appreciated. If you'd like to support the stream on a super chat, super chat down there, anything you give to the program is greatly appreciated. Also, in my link tree as well, and down in the description, uh, also at my Cash App as well, is at the bottom of the screen. And if you'd like to, my link tree as well that's posted in the description has all of those things as well. So please, anything that you give to the program is greatly appreciated. So we're going to continue to go to these lines. They are hot. We'll get to everybody. Please be patient. Again, 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. We're talking Jets. Next, I'm going to my guy, Steve. Steve, salutes to you. I want to thank you for calling in, Steve. Woo! Listen, Steve, this was a hot win, man. We took it, took the Titans in OT 24-20. This was a good one. Give me your thoughts about how this Jets offense was able to rebound. What were your thoughts about the magician, Zach Wilson, man, and the way he played in this football game? Hey, Joe. Well, first off, it's great to hear. It's always great to hear from you, man. I mean, hey, listen. Let me tell you something right now. I'm gonna. I, I really got to talk to you about this game. Here was the thing. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> On your previous show, I if you remember, I did predict the Jets to lose the game, 24 to 16. Yep. And the reason why I did predict them to lose this game was because, listen, I was. I still said that I was hoping that the Jets would give the Titans a competitive game. And then yep. you know, you know, let me let me just say this right now. That that win felt absolutely incredible. It, 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 it felt so good. I mean, I thought to myself that after we went down 9 nothing, I was like, okay, the de- it, it's basically almost like what it's been the first couple of weeks. The defense is yeah. keeping us into games, and the offense is doing nothing. But then things really, really started to click. It really, really, really started when Tennessee had the ball in our goal line area and their backup center who came in. And let me tell you something. Tennessee has a really good offensive line. 
We posted seven sacks on Ryan Tannehill, and that's incredible. Yeah. How, how, how could you not be impressed with what, how the defense did with putting seven sacks on Ryan Tannehill against a good Tennessee offensive line? So, continue more with this game. Now we go to the offensive side of the ball. Everything finally started to click, you know, when Wilson was throwing his connections and him to Corey Davis. The end around to Braxton Berrios was a nice play. The it was so nice to see Michael Carter score his first touchdown, not only as a Jet, but his first touchdown of his NFL career, his first rushing touchdown of his career. So then, you know, the game goes into halftime. We're still we're still down 9-7 going into half. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, Zach Wilson needs to try to drive. And then let me tell you something. When he was throwing those dimes, like that first one he threw to Keelan Cole, oh, my God, that was – Joe, that was beautiful. It, it was like it was a Patrick Mahomes throw. That that throw yeah. to Keelan Cole was so gorgeous. It just felt like I ate a whole cake. Okay, that 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 <laughs> was so that was a, a gorgeous pass. But the pass that really, I mean, here was the thing. Then he finally threw a touchdown pass. His first touchdown pass in a few uh, is since the first week. Let me tell you something, Joe. The other thing that was big about this game was having Jamison Crowder back. Jamison Crowder, yeah. having him back was huge, was huge. Because yeah. there was that one play where a lot of NFL analysis were even saying, when, when Zach Wilson had that, mm-hmm. and usually most rookie quarterbacks would just say, you know what, let me get back on the ball, I'm going to take a sack. No, Wilson yeah. took the ball and threw a beauty to Jamison Crowder on that play. Then found Crowder yeah. later at the end over a touchdown. But then we tied the game at 17. And let me tell you something. When we got the ball back, we were on our own 47-yard line. I'm thinking, all right, we got we to gotta continue. We got to see which drive we can do. Joe, that 53-yard pass to Corey Davis, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Joe, that was a bomb. after the game, after that, that game, and even from yesterday, I watched that play at least like 25 times a day. That was yes, that sir. was that was probably the best pass of the whole entire game that I saw from Zach Wilson. And, and, and yes. let me tell you something, Joe. Joe, I was screaming off the top of my lungs. I was screaming, "Oh my God, Joe!" I bet I bet you were screaming so loud you lost <laughs> your voice on that play. <laughs> Steve, Steve, I, let me tell you something. I could first off, we we. We saw Corey Davis kind of struggle, and everyone knows I think that Corey Davis real, has real ability. I think he's a guy that can definitely do some things for us, right? So we saw this guy struggle, and we were all like, come on, Corey, like you got to pick it up. The slip that caused the interception, the drop. We've seen drops throughout this year as well from various wide receivers, including him, and we were all kind of getting frustrated, like, come on, the offense was sputtering. But then like to see them turn it around, as, as you're talking about, it was phenomenal. And to see that, that 53-yard bomb where he's just playing backyard football, doesn't go long, Corey Davis does that. They're able to connect. Corey Davis goes up, gets the football. There was two guys there, too, and he was able to get the ball away from those guys, get down with the ball, get himself a touchdown, and really start the offensive momentum. I loved it. I absolutely loved to see that no, play. No, just Joe. brought me straight now, out of my seat, man. It brought me straight now, out Joe. of my seat, dude. So, go ahead. Now, Joe, let's now, let, now, now just continue on with this game, too. So, now – now the game, now we're up 24 to 17. So then obviously things are going back and forth. At one point Tennessee does drive the ball back down the field and then we were able to stop them on downs. Now here was the thing. The thing that I was a little bit shocked about was how Tennessee was using their timeouts really really early with like three and a half yep. minutes left. And I was yep. really shocked that the Titans coach Mike Verbal decided decided to use his timeouts. And he's a veteran coach. And honestly, yeah. he, he should have known better. But the thing was, on the third and ten play, now, I did like the fact when Tennessee had no timeouts left and Sala decided to become aggressive on that play and let Zach Wilson <laughs> throw the ball. Let me tell you something. If Wilson threw a perfect ball to Corey Davis because he just missed Corey Davis, Corey Davis catches that pass, we win the game in regulation. The game is over. But then, honestly, yeah. we gave Tennessee the ball back. I got to tell you something. When when Tennessee got the ball back, and when we had a fourth and ten on them, and and then Jared Wilson gets called for the defensive pi. I got to be honest, Joe. 
I, I, what did you think of that defensive P.I. call? Did you think it was the right call on Jarrett Wilson? I don't necessarily think it was the right call, but we've seen the refs, you know, make some. Yeah, yeah, and let me and let me tell you something. I mean, I, don't I mean, think it was I'll tell you call. one thing. There was, but I there was one. Yeah. Joe, there was one that, player in the cool. NFL that just came out with a statement. There was one player in the NFL that just came out with a statement and literally said that these NFL referees are messing up for the last many years. Yeah. Unfortunately. I, the defense, as much as good as they were, they unfortunately couldn't hold the Titans, and the Titans were able to tie the game. So now we go to overtime. I'll tell you something, Joe, right now, and I remember watching your video. We get the ball down the field. Zach Wilson throws another beauty bomb to court to, to Keelan Cole. That that pass was phenomenal, too, in overtime to yep. Keelan Cole. That pass was yep. so phenomenal. Then – now we, we, we're driving. We're getting the ball towards the first goal line. Now, the first and goal play, that play was on Wilson's fault. Unfortunately, unfortunately, he threw that pass too low to Griffin because if Griffin catches that ball, Griffin can go into the end zone and win the game. So then Absolutely. we go to the second and goal play, the Tevin Coleman play. Let, let, and here was the thing. I did like the effort by Coleman, but he just missed the goal, the goal line by an inch. Then we have third and goal on the one-yard line. And, unfortunately, this is where I have to blame Mike LaFleur for this play. I did not like that call at all that he did on third and goal when he made Wilson that try to scramble. That, that play was horrible. That play was so bad. So then, unfortunately, we had no choice. Kick the 23-yard field goal, make it 27-24. Tennessee then gets the ball back. I'll tell you one thing. I knew the key things is what we had to do, Henry, in the game. And here was the thing. There were at times where Derrick Henry was making plays. I'm like, oh, my God, Derrick Henry is going to win the game for Tennessee in overtime. But then when they yeah. had the ball on the 30-yard line, uh, 35-yard uh, – yeah, 30-yard line. Actually, you know, 26-yard line of the Jets. Yeah. On the third yeah. and five play, Tannehill – makes a veteran mistake, and it's a mistake he can't do. He gets penalized for that delay of game. And then what yeah. happens was we bring pressure on the next play. They have an incomplete pass. There's there's 22 seconds left on the clock. And, Joe, in case if, if Tennessee scores a field goal, this game is going to end in a tie. The game's going to end in a tie, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, and, unfortunately, to, I, wish the, I wish the NFL would change the rules, but luckily to the football gods, after Randy Bullock makes three field goals, who was a former Jet, he shanked it wide to the left. Joe, Joe, if, when he missed that field goal, I went on my knees, and I was, I went on my knees holding my face. I was like, thank God. I was screaming. I was happy. What was your reaction Listen, when that happened? See, see, first off, this is a phenomenal play. Phenomenal play. Phenomenal breakdown of the game for Steve. Listen, Steve, I was excited. I was hyped, okay? We got ourselves a win. After all that we saw, this football team fighting back, you broke it down. I broke it down earlier. The way the defense played from beginning to end was phenomenal. The offense woke up. We saw the magician, Zach Wilson, come alive. It was so great. It was so great to watch that, that field goal fall away. He didn't make it. We get ourselves a W. We walk out the door. Now we're looking at the schedule, Steve, right? Because we, we've got this W yep, with the Falcons. Now we got to talk about the Falcons. Hey, Joe, listen. You've got to be up at 630 in the morning second, where you hold are. On, hold on. I'm sorry. Go you, ahead. You're right. You're, you're right. So you hold on, Steve, because you're you bringing the heat right now. I'm not lying to you. You're bringing the heat. And I will be up early. We'll be watching this together, right? But when you look at this game, this game's in London. There's a lot of people. We've seen teams in London before. They go out there, kind of start sluggish. How concerned are you? about this young New York Jets team going out there with the time change and with things going on, that they will come out and start sluggish in this football game against the Falcons. Yeah, absolutely. Cause, so here is the thing. When, when the schedule first came out, when I saw that, that the Jets were going to a game out in London, I was like, oh, my God, you got to be kidding me. Out of all the mm-hmm. teams that had to be picked to go to London, besides the Jacksonville Jaguars, the Jets had to be chosen to go. And so, but they gave us the game against the Atlanta Falcons. So here is the thing about this. The Jets have to fly out to London early. Maybe they'll fly out to London tomorrow, maybe, or maybe they flew out today or sometime. Because the thing is, they have to get used to the time, to, to the changing of like the time, the timeline and all that stuff. 
because, and I mean, yeah. the Falcons I know are going to have to do the same thing too because they're traveling. The the thing is though, we got to start fast, okay? The offense yeah. has to yeah. has to learn to start fast. And the, like like how the defense did. Listen, the defense only gave up nine points in the first quarter, mm-hmm. and that was the thing. The defense didn't give up a touchdown until the last quarter of the game. Now, yeah. the only thing is about going into this game, Joe, is we have to start off fast. Now, here is my thing about the Atlanta Falcons. I mean, listen, everybody all knows that the last few years and ever since the Atlanta Falcons have choked in that Super Bowl, the Atlanta Falcons have not been the same. They're not the same team that they used to be. They have Matt Ryan, who is their quarterback, who is a veteran quarterback that's been around since 2008. Listen, Matt Ryan is coming off of a four-touchdown game. Uh, he had a great game against the Washington football team this past uh, Sunday. I mean, even though the mm-hmm. Falcons did lose, but the Falcons gave up 34 points on defense, and, and, and they gave up a lot of points. I mean, yes, Joe, you did make a good point about the Falcons having uh, Dante uh, Fowler Jr. on their team, who's a very good pass yep. rusher. But the yep. thing is, though, they have a lot of – I mean, the, the player that I'm actually really the most worried about is Cordell Patterson because – He's a great kick mm. returner. He's also a good receiver. He can also run with yeah. the ball. To me, he is Atlanta's most dangerous offensive player. I mean, everyone all says that Calvin Ridley is also up there, too. I mean, Ridley is a good receiver. He's not the best receiver in the game, but he is a good receiver. I mean, the Falcons no, are yeah, a veteran listen, team. Steve. Yeah, they, they are, Steve, and they got quite a bit of players, like you said, as well. And I talked about him earlier, too. Calvin Ridley is a guy that can really put it together. We saw Cordero Patterson used all over the place. Mike Davis as well, their running back. He's a guy that can move. He's a guy that can come out the backfield and catch the football as well. They've got quite a bit of weapons. So, listen, Steve, i got to get going. So, my next question and my final question for you, because you brought the heat tonight, man, is given your score prediction, who do you think wins, who do you think loses, how do you think this game ends against the Jets and the Falcons? Okay, so this is the thing about this game. So, if I'm looking at this game, this, I know the Jets, as of right now, are three-and-a-half-point underdogs. I mean, they always like to put the Jets as underdogs, they, it, despite the fact that, you know, the Jets just came up with an impressive win against Tennessee this past Sunday. The, the, the way of how I'm looking at this game, I actually do see the Jets getting a win in this game. Now, the okay. thing is, though, they got to start fast in this game. We can't start yeah. slow in London. Because if we, no. if we get off to a slow start, the Falcons can find a way to tear us apart. But I do see us getting a W. I am going to give the Jets a 27-17 to 17 win over the Atlanta Falcons. Ooh, let's go. Absolutely, Steve. Listen, I'm going to go ahead and let you go. I want to thank you for calling in tonight. You have yourself a good one. Ooh, listen, Steve called in with the fire. Phenomenal breakdown. He brought it, and he takes the Jets as well. We got so many people taking the Jets tonight after a phenomenal win against the Titans, man. This team is fired up. So we're going to keep getting to these lines again. 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. We will get to everybody, okay? Just be patient. So next, I'm going to my guy, Adon. Adon, we're coming directly to you. Aiden, I told you. Oh, I'm sorry, Aiden, excuse me. I apologize. Aiden, salute to you. I want to thank you for calling in today, my friend. Give me your thoughts about this this win over the Titans, man. How phenomenal was the Jets' defense in this win, bro? Hey, Joe, we're we're pumped up. I'm actually here with my son, Aiden. He's a nine-year-old Jet fan. He's a fan of your show. He just wanted to say how phenomenal a job you were doing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Say hi to Joe, Aiden. Hi, Joe. What's going on? It's good to talk to you. That's what I'm talking about. Young Jets fans, that's what we need. We need to keep this this fandom alive. Salute to you, my friend. And, again, thank you. No <laughs> He's a little nervous. But, yeah, we were pumped up to see uh, Zach Wilson do his thing and finally uh, live up to the draft stats that we all knew he would, um, you know, uh, live up to. Yeah. Oh, that. Yeah. Oh, oh. I'm right there with you. I mean, we saw him really put things together. We saw him play, you know, get outside and extend plays using his legs. Uh, that 53-yard bomb to Corey Davis I thought was phenomenal. We saw him make so many great throws in his game, but also saw him not kind of break down. You see rookie quarterbacks when things get around them that are chaotic, when 
things aren't the best, especially when stuff breaks down in a pocket, they just kind of fold. We saw him not do that. What are your thoughts about how composed he is in moments of chaos, man? I think you hit it on the, on the head, the words composure. I mean, that was what Joe Douglas mm-hmm. put in his scouting uh, you know, report. And um, you know, and it was it was actually a boon for us, you know, because we weren't we weren't we didn't know what kind of old line we were going to have, you know, as far as especially on the interior, you know, when it broke down, are we going to have that guy who's going to be a magician? And he kind of showed his his Patrick Mahomes, uh, to kind of like yeah. you know uh, get us over, you know, uh, well, like I think about the Patriot kid, you know, he's a guy who's going to win in the pocket, but you know, he's not as fun as to watch as a guy who can kind of create stuff for you, the playmaker that Zach Wilson is. So it was good to see. Exactly. Exactly. I also think our our, deep, our defense played phenomenal. I don't ever want to – every single time, all the time tonight, we're definitely going to mention them. The way that they played was unbelievable. What were your thoughts about some of the things that we saw out of Quinn and Williams in this game, man? Well, you know, I was actually more impressed with his brother. I mean, you know, little well-known guy from Murray State, and he was lighting, lighting people up. I, I know, yes, um, sir. I, I know, Robert, I know Henry's going to be filling that in the cold tub for, for about a week. <laughs> he sure will, man. Let me tell you, that dude was flying all over the place. Now, my next question for you is: uh, You look at this situation with Marcus May. Are you a guy that's ready uh, to move on from him? Came out with his DUI stuff, man. Damn, Marcus. You know what? I, I it's not so much Marcus as much as his agent. You know, I don't mm-hmm. know if you ever watched Keenan and Pill when you had Obama. <laughs> And then the guy who used to talk for Obama was Keenan and Peele. Like, that's his agent. You know, his agent is talking all this <laughs> this trash and kind of putting yeah. it on the guy's name, man. And, um, yeah. you know, I, I, I like Marcus. I, I do. I, I feel like, you know, people make mistakes, um, mm-hmm. you know, but I, I, it seems like it seems like he's not long for us, you know. Um, I, I think J.D., here's another thing. I'm, I love J.D., but I'm kind of worried that, you know, the way things are getting out, that he's kind of shortchanging, getting 20% of the franchise tag, that you know that might that might put a damper on agents want to come here next year. You know, I mean, if Zach Wilson mm-hmm. can continue his play, we might have something. I don't want free agents to be scared of because they say, hey, Joe, Joe you know, Joe Douglas, he didn't pay Jamal. Uh, he he yeah. shortchanged him off in May. Um, you know, got yeah. you know got rid of Leonard Williams. You know, uh, most of these things I agree with, but you know, you mm-hmm. you know these agents talk. You know, these agents talk, and 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 you know, before you know it, we're not the design. You know, the the, des- the destination you know, to be at. Yeah, no, look, look, I hear you. But at the same time, he can counter those arguments with, well, yeah, I shortchanged Marcus. Look what he's in. Look at the situation <laughs> he's in right now. Yeah, I shortchanged him. Look at the situation he's in. I don't trust this guy right now. You know, I don't trust what he did. He can, he can counter with that. You know, he can. Okay. But I hear you. There's been question marks about that as well. There's been other people that have talked about it too, about how, you know, J.D. is is, is very cheap, especially when it comes to free agents. He doesn't like to overpay, and he doesn't like to pay, you know, certain guys big bucks. You know, he's a big build through the draft guy, and that really puts a lot of pressure on you to make sure that those drafts pan out. I hear you, but we'll see what happens yeah. going forward, you know, with this situation. So my next and final question for you is, we're going against these Falcons, man. This team turned up. What is your score prediction for the game, man? How do you think it ends? Oh, man. Uh, my heart says 20, 21, 21-17. Our defense hopefully makes it ugly for them. But, um, you know, like Steve said, the last call, he said, if we don't start fast, it, it, it can kind of it can kind of snowball on us. I, I have complete yeah. confidence in this defense. They've done it against, you know, um, you know some of the top teams uh, in the league. And the Falcons are kind of in the middle range. So I feel like we have a shot. Um, it's just that, you know, if Zach Wilson uh, goes back to the basement and not to the ceiling, we're, we're going to have a problem. You know, I feel like the old line is kind of starting to gel a little bit. Um, you know, mm-hmm. still still some problems with, with, with McGovern and, 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 you know, GVR. Um, but, you know, they're, they're starting to get – you know, it's kind of crazy that now that Beckton's out, they're starting to gel a little bit more than they are when Beckton was here. That's, that's, that's kind of – that I did not see coming. But, um, um, you know, I, I, if, if we get to a fast start, we're going to be in this thing. But I, I think it's going to be a dog fight. So I'm going to go 21-17 uh, if we show up. I know that defense is going to be there. You know, Zach Wilson, you know, keeps his composure, uh, learns, uh, gets rid of the ball uh, early because that's what he was doing. He, you know, he stopped some of the late throws except for that, like, that, that late touchdown to the crowd. I mean, he, it, he scored, but it came out, the ball came out late. He was actually open early yeah. in, in, in his outcut. And but, um that's yeah, but like the corner route to um, the corner route to uh, geez, what's his name? Why am I why am I blanking on my man? Um, 
88. Cole? Keelan Please Cole. help me. Please help me, Joe. Keelan Cole. Keelan Cole. Talk about Keelan Cole. Yeah. Yeah, and the yeah. point route was beautiful, right? It was thrown, that was thrown early and on time. So I think he's starting to kind of get it. Like, this ball's got to come out before the break, you know, not not at the break, yeah. not after, you know, not, not when he's about to break, not at the top of the ride. That ball's got to come out before because, you know, these, these defensive yeah. backs are closing quick. Um, if, if he can perform like that, uh, a couple of uh, off-platform plays, um, I, th- I think we're in good money. You know, I think we're going to come up with another success because um, Matt Ryan don't move. You know, they, they've been feasting on, on guys who don't move. So I think that guy's dead as fried yes, chicken. Sir. All right, so you got the Jets winning. I, I, I listen. Let's go. Listen, hey, I got to get back to these lines, man. Next time I have a show, I want to hear from you. All right, my friend. All right, brother. Say good night, Aiden. Night. Right. Have a good night. Have a good night. Thank you. Again, I want to thank him and his his uh, his son for watching as well. It's always great to hear. You know that I have a lot of different people watching me. It's always wonderful. Salute to all the Jets fans out there. Again, 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. Call in. We're taking all callers. The line's hot. Please be patient. We will get to everybody. Please like the stream wherever you're watching me from. If you're on YouTube, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and also share the stream as well with your friends, family, social media, anywhere you can share it. You know, I love going back and forth with people. I love interacting with people. Let them know. You know what I'm saying? I love love hearing, hey, I heard about this stream from somebody, or I saw this, and I'm watching now, and I'm doing this, and I'm doing that. Let's talk. You know, go ahead. You know what I'm saying? I love it. I love it. I love it. So we're going to keep getting back to these lines again, 515-602-9639, 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in, all right? Next, I'm going to my guy, Bill. C.T. Monty, Jason, we'll get to you in a second. This is my guy, Bill, man. Bill Bill knows what's up, all right? Bill knows his Jets. He knows what's going on. Salute to you, Bill. I want to thank you for calling in. Bill, give me your thoughts, okay, on this Jets defense. Isn't it just phenomenal? Even without May, even about, even without LaMarcus Joyner, even without, you know, Carl Lawson, this Jets defense is still putting it together and playing well. Give me your thoughts on it, man. Well, absolutely. I couldn't agree. I couldn't agree more. Uh, they put it together. The defense we all knew was about speed at the linebacker and the, and the safety side, and the, uh, basically those guys are interchangeable. Unfortunately, with the injuries we have, but the way they constructed the team, there's some decent depth, and they can rotate guys back and forth. So that's great. But all starts up front, as we all know. Everyone's a little concerned with Lawson went out. We replaced him with another Lawson. You know, they can't replace him, but we have a guy who's in there, and then Huff has come to play as well. Huff is out there bringing a lot of energy. We saw that when he's at Memphis, yep. and a lot of people didn't quite keep their eye on him uh, during the draft process, but he, got, he kind of slipped a little bit. It was just really kind of strange. But you go back to his tape in college, the guy was phenomenal. He's got that energy that they need. And then the, the second Williams brother coming out of nowhere, I, I honestly, like, I was like, did they switch Hugh's number? What's, what's with Williams of 56? So, But the guy, you know, the brothers <laughs> Williams have come to play, and uh, that's a nice surprise that adds there. So, if we can keep the uh, the defense going full tilt, I think last week it was fortunate that we had a situation with the Titans receivers where they were really short in the receivers, but our guys in the corners yeah. have played really well previously. It's going to be interesting to see what happens this week when you have uh, Matt Ryan and some of those guys in Atlanta that says those guys can put up uh, to that test. That's going to be very interesting. Yeah, and, and again, we got young guys in the secondary that's playing well as too. We saw Bryce Hall really step up in this game. He's playing well. Yeah. He's played well pretty much this you know season so far. Michael Carter the yeah. second, who really stepped in, a young guy that's really showing us that he can play well at that corner spot. We even saw some play from Isaiah Dunn, who had a big play, a breakup in this game. So, yeah, these, I'm telling you, this defense is really coming together, really doing what they got to do. So far, they've been the best yeah. part of this team all season consistently. We've seen this defense yeah. really pay well. The yeah. offense we've been Absolutely. learning about – yeah, and, and that's, that leads me to my next question for you. When you look at what you're seeing out of Zach Wilson right now, just his ability to go out there and do his thing, how are you feeling about his play? Yeah, he's he's playing where we need him to play right now. I think a lot of people went crazy with the three and hit the panic button as usual the first couple of games. The guys you know, moved across the country the first time in his life. The guys left Utah. He's in New York of all places. He's got to be like the CEO of a major organization and uh, a top executive. And, you know, it's going to take him some time. I mean, we, everyone's got to pump the brakes on this. Give him a chance. He's a smart guy. He works really hard, as you saw. Learned a lot from his mistakes the first couple of games. Looks like he learned a lot from game three to game four. Uh, uh, prior week, he did a lot of work, put a lot of work in. 
um, and the results were there. I think the uh, he's getting on, in sync with his receivers. He likes Corey Dillon. Uh, sorry, Corey Dillon. Corey Davis. Corey Davis, Corey Davis is going to have to uh, you know, get a little stick him there, but uh, he's getting better. Um, he's he's got to play up to the level that we need for a guy who paid him that money with a rookie QB. He's got a lead, so hopefully he can kind of uh, you know get that settled in there. It was good to see Crowder back. Crowder, um, you know, he had to take that pay cut, which I kind of figured he had to. So I'm glad he's there. He's playing for a, a, a nice contract this off season. So he's going to show up. Now he's healthy. He had a great game, very solid. So those receiving options really came up, running games there, offensive line. Uh, I think everyone kind of knows that's coming together as, as it needs to come together. But as long as the defense can go there and keep pressure, that's going to help. I think the first few games, everything was kind of finding uh, – everything was kind of settling in, defense side, offensive side, especially at those guys playing with each other for the first time, especially in the offensive line. You know, each guy had a new guy next to him, so it was kind of a, a challenge for everyone to kind of gel. But it looks like now that they've had an opportunity to play, get a little bit in sync, it looks like the guys are really coming together. So on the offensive side, I, I'm not thinking it's going to be, you know, we're obviously we're not there yet. There's a lot to learn. But as long as Zach can, uh, you know, understand we can get away with, be aggressive when he can be aggressive. And I think he's, it looks like he really kind of learned that between the last two weeks. You know, previously he's thinking he's back in, the, in college at BYU just throwing the ball where he felt like he could squeeze it in. Now it looks like he learned the hard way. He's got to keep that to – the, the short shots, go for the short yeah. shots, short, yeah. Yeah, intermediate and the short shots, you know, keep those a little bit more risky on those because you have more control. But when he goes deep, it looks like he's taking more measured shots, and that's really what's going to be, be uh, leading to his success. So they can just keep it up. Coaching knows what they want to do. They need to stay focused on these guys, keep the energy up. Looks like the team has a lot of energy. It's always good to win, but we'll see how they bounce back. They have to travel, you know, across the pond. So that's going to be interesting to see how that game goes. Yeah, it is. And and that brings up my next question for you is, and my final question for you is, you look at this upcoming game against the Falcons, do you think that this Jets offense can go out there and really light it up, especially, again, we're going to London? Because the Falcons kind of have a banged-up secondary. Harris, uh, their safety is dealing with an injury. You also got another guy that they just uh, put on IR, Oliver. You know, Do you think this Jets offense can really take advantage of them? Yeah, Oliver, uh, Isaiah Oliver the last couple of years wasn't really a guy who, you know, was going to light it up anyway. So if they're going to mm-hmm. their third string behind them, it's going to be pretty bad. So definitely they have yeah. to, again, Davis is going to have to step up. He's going to have to lead. He's going to have to get open. He's going to have to, to, to draw that attention so we can have the second and third options open. And then Crowder, you can see Crowder and Cole should have huge games. Um, that's yeah. really it. I mean, they have to exploit and take advantage of that. I don't think anyone has to be a, a, a football. You don't have to be a Lombardi to figure out or Parcells what you have to do with this game. You have to attack the secondary to have you guys get open. So it was a nice um, dress rehearsal this past week. Like I said, we had, it was a great game for once the team on all three levels played well. Um, they just have to continue that, carry it and do what they do best, do well, do well. And uh, Wilson would keep making the, the right choices and keeping his head. We should be good. Yeah. I think when you look at Atlanta, I, I honestly, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not a big, really big school on Atlanta. I got to take a look at them, but um yeah, I, I think the biggest biggest weapon they have is Ryan, and they haven't really exploited that tight end that they picked early so far. So Pitt, I, I don't really know what the weapon. weapons. Oh, man, Pitts is a weapon. Cordell Patterson is a guy they use all over the place. Calvin Ridley's a guy that can – he can hurt you, man. If you don't account for him and you don't keep him under wraps, he's a guy that can move. But Pitts is a guy that I'm worried about. Again, big tight end, he can move around. But Cordell Patterson is a guy that they just use – Everywhere, dude, it's insane. So they've got some guys over there. So my, my the final question before yeah, I let you stand. That's not, I was going to get that pressure. They get that pressure on Ryan. I mean, Ryan's getting up there in age. I mean, he's Matty Ice. But I think we want to get some pressure. And they're, they're very. Each guy creates his own yep. pressure on the line. I'm not seeing a lot of guys who are relying on stunts or guys double team. They're just kind of going in on their own, beating each man uh, in front of them on the offensive line. So I want to see what happens. The point, yeah, they have some weapons. But when they have to get that ball out yep. so quickly and we play our defense, we keep everything in front of us. And look for a couple of interceptions this week, I think. Yeah. So give me your final score prediction, my friend. Oh, final score. Yeah, the, the London games are always kind of weird. So let's go uh, Jets 19, Atlanta 13. Keep it close. All right. Oh. All right, bro. All right. You go ahead. Thank you for calling in, my friend. You have yourself a good night. Listen, Bill calling in with fire. Bill knows what he's talking about. We're going to keep getting to these lines. Again, 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. Next, I'm going to my guy, CT, man. CT, everybody, please be patient. We'll get to everybody tonight. Salutes to my guy, CT. I want to thank him for calling in. CT, man, we are talking right now. We're talking Jets. Give me your thoughts, man, about this Jets defense and the way that they're playing right now. 
do you think that we'll still be able to get a pass rush like we got a pass rush against the Titans on Atlanta? Do you think we'll be able to bring the heat, my friend? Well, it's good, Joe. It's good, man. I'm glad to be here, man, after a win. And I told you guys, I told you guys, man, I come on here and preach Pistons every single week, pretty much. And I'm telling you, we got something here. We got something here, man. And, and you talked about the defense, man. That defense, yep. bro, let me tell you, it's going to be it's gonna be tough for some of these teams if these guys can continue to improve because I think our, yep. our, our defense is built upon that front line, you know. And without Carl Lawson, they said they were going to uh, – the, the standard still stays high. You know, Carl Lawson's preached that the standard never doesn't change. And these guys are yep. going out there and proving that the standard hasn't changed. And I'm like, man, Bryce Huff has so many pressures, and he got a sack. And to fill that role is not an easy task, you know. And, and so he, I see, think we got a real gem in um, on draft free agency last year in Bryce Huff. And that's a huge get because – you know, when you go on a draft and you make picks, and um, you never know, you know, how complete players might turn out. You know, obviously we got rid of James Morgan and all this stuff, and I know that people are kind of talking down to, about the last year's draft, but I think that it was still good. I, just, I think we got Bryce Hall, we got Bryce Huff, we got Bryce Squared, who both got sacks. Think about that. We they both got sacks. These young cats, uh, into and, and not to mention, you know, the tackling. And uh, I got to hand it to C.J. Mosley just being a general man for the squad. He, he had a play where he changed us out of, you know, um, you know, man-to-man to zone and caused a sack for Quentin Williams. And I'm like, that's that Talk. kind of veteran presence that brings it all together. You know what I mean? So these young cats have somebody that they can rely on and trust. And what I see right now that I never saw in the Gates era, that I saw a little bit in the Ryan Fitzpatrick and Todd Bowles era, but it didn't come to fruition. What I'm seeing right now is a whole team buying in. I'm seeing a whole team buying in. And, bro, if this defense comes back next year where Carl Lawson, we can be a top five defense. And I'm telling you, we can be in the playoffs next year. And I know that it sounds crazy after one win to say that, but I'm, I'm an energy yeah. guy. I can, see, I can see the improvement, and I can see where this can go if this young team okay. continues to improve. No, look, look, CT, I hear you. I, I respect it. I'm going I'm to hit, hit you with the hat. I hear what you're saying. You know, I'm a guy, I just, I want to take it game by game, but I do think, you know, I'm excited about the win. I'm excited about what we did. But going forward, you know, you look at this Atlanta Falcons team, and they're tough. This is a team that you got to go out there and play. That's what I look at it like. I don't care how people are looking at them. You know, I, I think, I believe they're one and three as well. They just got out of a, a fight with the with the Washington uh, football team. So you look at this situation, this is a team that can bring it to us. This is a team that has weapons that can do things. How concerned sure. are you about Pitt? Because the New York Jets do have a history of struggling against, you know, tight ends, especially big body guys that can move and be deadly within the red zone. How concerned are you about Pitt's this tight end that they have? It all depends on that front line, man. Uh, we got a lot of, mm. but we got, we, we, we worked together last game. Like, there were some sacks that were just, like, you know, you guys just muscling in against the quarterback, and there were some coverage sacks. So when it comes to Pitts and Calvin Ridley, they can get off. It's definitely a possibility. I'm never going to put it past Atlanta to pull out some really big games. With Matt Ryan, who's a veteran, who's still, you know, he I know they don't have many wins right now, but he's still that dude. He, he's been to a Super Bowl, you know, so he always that's has that in somewhere. And, and that's, yeah. um, you know, you know if he, just, if he has a good, good day, you know, it could be a tough day for us. However, um I'm excited for our defense, and I and I believe in them. I think that they haven't this season made one egregious mistake, other than um, Redwine kind of blowing the coverage in the first game. Yeah, I was off and the then red, he got red out. Wine. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Redwine, he's not here anymore. So you know, yeah. I, I remember I posted in the chat. I was like oh, watching with you on your uh, live, and I'm like, you know, release Redwine because after I saw that, I'm like, yeah, that kind of move. I don't want that on my team, you know, and they did, you know. So um, other than that, like, I do, I do believe in our defense, and if they can just have some more, give the front line some more time by just, you know, getting in places to get those coverage sacks as well as, you know, mm-hmm. you know these guys just getting, making that pressure. Um, we can, we can, we can, put, we can, we can dominate just like we did with Tennessee, I, I do believe. Because what yeah. I feel yeah. like is that we've had a hard time with the running backs. We've had a hard time with the screens. He's had a hard time with the yep. running backs, and that's yep. what our team needs to get better at. I think the coverage has been actually pretty solid. Michael Carter making plays, Bryce Hall making deep plays. So I have faith in them so far. 
Okay. Yeah. Look, I hear you. So my final question before I let you go, CT, because you're bringing the heat so far, man, is what, is what is your final score prediction, man, against this game, against the Falcons? Who do you think wins? Who do you think loses? Uh, I got to go with the Jets every single week, man. I go with my, my Jets. I'll say the t- score I'm going to go with, um, let's say uh, 27 to 18. I think we can beat them 27 to 18. I, I'm, I'm really liking this defense. And it's, 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 Go ahead. Exactly. You, you really like- yeah. yeah, yeah, I really like 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 our chances. Uh, I know that it's a, a away game, but being that it's over the pond, it's pretty much going to be a home game because there's a lot of Jets fans, you know, in the UK. Uh, so I'm excited to see what what, what they pull out. I'm going to get up early and watch the game, and uh, yeah, go Jets. I think that we got one here. I think that this could be a start of something good, and then we go into the bye. Absolutely. Listen, CT, I'm going to let you go. The lines are hot. I want to thank you for calling in tonight, my friend. You have a good one. Well, Jeff, you take care. Have a good day. I send you. Listen, CT bringing heat, man. We're going to keep getting to these lines. Again, 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. Next, I'm going to my guy, Monty. Listen, Monty, me and Monty get into it. <laughs> me up? and Monty What's get into up, it. Man? Oh, hold on. What's Monty, up, man? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> the alarm ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. My security, top dollar, top dollar. Yeah, All right, you ain't sneaking in no more, dude. Uh, hey, no I, more. I, I, don't, I don't want no. I don't want no. Be, I'm gonna be civilized today. I'm gonna be civilized Are today. You? And, and you, I'm, I'm gonna be the voice. I, I, hey, Joe, I'm gonna be the voice of reason as well. Me the voice of reason as well on this call, really? man. Really? But I'm gonna chill. Okay. I'm gonna Here chill. we go. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm going to chill. I'm going to chill. Okay. All right. Well, let's start off, Monty, because, you know, we got to get into it. The lines is hot. Okay. Okay. Give me give me your thoughts. Give me your thoughts about this Jets defense and this win against the Titans. How are you feeling about it, man? Uh, I think it's a, I think it's a good win, uh, especially when you're dealing with a, a team that, you know, a young team and a lot of guys who are in their second, third year, um, you got to start getting um, – you got to start getting these wins, man. And this is a game where the Titans didn't have their, uh, you know, their starting receivers. And, you know, it's a game that we just had to come out with, man. And um, I, I'm, I'm excited that the Jets won. Um, I actually I actually stopped watching uh, the third quarter, the beginning of the third quarter, until, dude, I follow, I follow your tweets. I got you, like, whenever you tweet. You know, I got the uh, the notifications on, and I just see you just Salute. going, "Ham, Corey Davis, this, Corey Davis, that." I'm like, "Oh, man, what's I'm like, man, bro? Like, what's going on? Are we, are we making plays out here? Tune back in, and I see that that the game is getting close, and uh, I'm like, man, this is this, it, it was very special to watch because you're watching um, Zach Wilson just develop before our eyes, man. Like I said, I don't think the Jets have 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 any talent on the team besides like Zach Wilson. Uh you got a lot of mm-hmm. guys who are, you know, you know, they do they decent and they, you know, they 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 flash, but Zach Wilson it, you you know I've always been high on Zach Wilson because he just has it, man. He just has the the way his release, how he's always, you know, ready to just throw the ball uh in any type of position and he's not scared to throw it. He's not scared to th- uh the, to uh slang it, man. And and I, I like guys like that who don't flinch, man. And hopefully we can get enough talent around him to where he doesn't end up like Sam Darnold where, you know, he's just scared to, you know, he's just scared of the rush. Once I saw Sam Darnold just scared of getting hit, I was just like, yeah, this guy this guy might be ruined. And hopefully Zach doesn't get that way. He has the moxie in which I like. But, yeah, man, get back to the game. And I was just – it was just a, a, a really good game in the development of – you know, the young guys on the team to just battle through adversity, come back, and get the dub, man. Yeah, yeah. And I I was excited, like you said as well, to see the offense kind of rebound from a shaky start. Uh, We've seen that. Yeah. And this is what I want to see going forward. I'd like to see them start hot, but we'll get into the Falcons game in just a second. They were able to rebound from a shaky start, particularly Corey Davis, and get things Mm -hmm. going. That's what I'd like to see. You got that late second quarter getting that touchdown, like you said, as well, just starting to get that momentum and that mojo rolling, and they were able to really go out and make right, plays. And some of the right. throws that magician was making, okay, was unbelievable. Phenomenal, the, man. 
do some of the touch. The touch that he put to that ball to Keelan Cole going down that left sideline to lead him out of bounds was like, bro, right. bro, right. come on. Right. Come on. And right. so that, that and Joe, me to my next. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, uh, no, I was getting ready to say, you know, um, the last couple of weeks, a lot of guys been down on Zach Wilson and, you know, call, calling yeah. him a fraud, this, that, and the third. And I'm just yeah. like, man, dude, like, I see, I always have to be the voice of reason in the sav- with the savages, man. Because do you, if you don't see the talent, I, I have to, man. I have to. Do I have you? to be the voice of reason, man. Yes. Yes. All the right. dude has oh. it. He's special. He is a special talent, man. I didn't see it at first. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you. I'm not going to say, like, you know, I, I was thrilled with the pick in the beginning. But mm-hmm. when I saw just little things in preseason, I'm like, man, this dude is a – He's a player, man, and uh, and I, yeah. you know, I did watch some film on him in college too. But man, he has it, and the Jets have not had a player like Zach Wilson. I think he's of the Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers type of type of quarterback. Only, Ooh, those, only that's, if that's, we're that's able. That's a big name, Mark. Hey, I, I, big hey, name. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. But okay. it's only if your boy Joe Douglas can do his job and surround mm-hmm. the offense with enough talent for him to mm-hmm. grow, continue to grow, and support him. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah. this offseason, Joe, we, we, we got to do something, man. If you, don't, if you don't go out and get use these picks and go get number one receivers, mm-hmm. get some more protection, get to, uh, 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 you know, draft another running There's back, you know, a, a, the yeah. guy, you got to, man. Well, you, you have to. Well, it's listen, time. Hold, hold on, my. Yeah, and look, I hear you. I hear you, and um, we'll we'll get to that when it comes. But yes, Joe Douglas needs to go for it. This is a building. This is a rebuilding process. We all know that we in that. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of spots on this team mm-hmm. that needs to be filled. People talk about that other corner spot. Oh, they right. say, hey, we might still need to add a live, another wide receiver. A lot of people want a legitimate pass rusher like we had in Carl Lawson. They want mm-hmm. to pair another young mm-hmm. one. There's a lot of things to talk about. But I just want yeah. to say that this season, I hear you saying, Monty, but I want to stay here. So my next question for you is, I want to talk to you about this upcoming game in London. Give me your thoughts okay. about our matchup with the Falcons team, man, because let me tell you something. A lot of people are looking at this Falcons offense and saying it's whatever. I think they have some weapons and there's some things they can do. How concerned are you about Cordell Patterson? Uh, I'm very concerned. Um, you know, I, I look back at that Carolina game and I see that we struggle with a uh, guy like CNC, Cordell Patterson, is, is mm-hmm. you know, I'm not saying he's of the same caliber, but he's a very explosive player. They line him up in different in different uh, places and to uh, try to get mismatches. And uh, the Jets have proven that, you know, they, they're not the, the, the best tacklers. Uh, when you have when you have athletes, super athletes on the other side of the, on the other side of the ball, so I'm very I'm yeah. very concerned with that. I'm very concerned with um, the defense in general because I feel like Matt Ryan, especially uh, Salah's style of defense, he's a bend but don't break type of type yeah. of uh, coordinator. You know he you know he throws <laughs> in some things, some wrinkles and everything. But I think Matt Ryan is the type of guy he's just gonna take what whatever the uh defense gives you and he'll just chop you up all the way down the field. I'm not concerned really, you know, with him going deep, throwing the ball deep, but I am concerned a lot of uh, uh a lot with the underneath passes, your slant routes, your post routes, your dig routes. Like I'm concerned mostly with that. Guys running out of the backfield and I, uh, the, the the type of quarterback that my, Matt Ryan is, he's seen every single thing in the NFL. He's a very experienced quarterback. And if you think that you know what the <laughs> the just defense was doing something against Ryan Tannehill with no receivers at all, and you know yeah. we knew we knew Derrick Henry <laughs> was going to run the ball, and he still had over a hundred yards. So you yeah, know, yeah, I'm very concerned that that we knew that they were going to run the ball, and we still we still couldn't stop them. So that's something that's very concerning to me, and uh, and I I think the I think the Falcons are going to bring it, man. Okay, give me so before I let you go, Monty, because you're bringing the heat, man. Give me What's the up? final score prediction for this game, bro. <sighs> uh, on, it's a London game. It's it's a London game, correct? It's it's, it's over yes, in it London. Is. Um, London. I think I think I would have to go with the more experienced quarterback in that situation. Um, so I will have to go with the Falcons. Um, I will say 
I will say 24 to 12. 24 12 Falcons. Wow. Auntie is the first person to not Falcons. The first person. Let's give it to him again. I, I told you, Joe. I have to the voice of reason on, 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 on this call, man. A lot of people are getting super duper excited after this mm-hmm. week. I didn't see the same excitement last week. You know, you just I'm I'm gonna I'm a stay the course type of guy. I said one okay. or two wins. This year, mm-hmm. and you, I, I, I stick by it, man. I just want to see, I just want to see positive development from the team. I just want to see guys be consistent, and this is what I want to mm-hmm. see. I want to see Bryce, Bryce Huff, uh, and um, Corey Davis, um, mm-hmm. Keelan Cole, Michael Carter, all these guys. I want to see them do that, do the same things that they. Why they're making play? I want to see them do it this week. Can you stay consistent okay. and be the guy each and every week? And that's what I want okay. to see from the Jets. Now, if I can continue to see that, I will, you know, I will 100% buy in to the Kool-Aid of, of what, what, what Salah is, is selling. I'll, I'll drink it. But until – and Joe Douglas with these players. But until they, they prove to me that they can be consistent for one, mm-hmm. two, three weeks, I uh, you know I, I'm I'm gonna stick with how how I feel about the Jets, man. All right, all right. Well, listen, Monty, I'm gonna go ahead and let you go. The lines are hot. Got to get. I told you I was gonna be you. civilized, Joe. I told you. I, I, you were. <laughs> I'll give you that. You were. You were civilized. Uh, everybody, Monty, everybody. All right. I want to thank you for calling. <laughs> and you have yourself a good night. All right, you, you got yourself a go. All right. Listen, that was Monty. Everybody, Monty was the first one to say that he's not gonna pick the Jets. That was Monty. That's all I'm saying. It was Monty. It wasn't me. It was Monty. 515 is the number. Call in. But before we get to that, we got to get to the big, 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 big donation. I said GM Sin with the big, 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 big donation. Salute to you, GM. GM says, ATV standing up hasn't allowed any pressures. The linebacker core will be stronger when Davis returns. Zach will get better. The game is slowing down for him. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, this team starting to feel it kind of turn around. Again, salute to GM with the big, 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 big donation. Salute. He's bringing takes. GM standing up. I respect you. I respect you. I respect that take. And, again, I want to thank you for supporting the platform. We're going to keep getting to these lines. Again, 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. Next, I'm going to my guy from North Carolina, man. Woo! This is my guy from North Carolina. Listen, he knows his jet salutes. I want to thank you for hey, calling in. to you. How are you doing, We got doing, this Joe? big one. All right. Yeah, I haven't heard from you in a little bit. We just beat the Titans, man, in OT. What are your thoughts about the performance of Zach Wilson? Tremendous. Tremendous. I think the impression I had of him is that he just looked so comfortable and free and easy. He didn't show any signs of, you know, the last several weeks, which hadn't been easy, I imagine, especially a player of his ilk being young and first year in the league. It was a little rough. Got beat up the last several weeks, and to see him come out and, and, and drop this kind of performance was tremendous. I miss the mm-hmm. game, and I hate it. I, you know, I work on Sundays at the oh. airport. We work uh, Saturdays oh, okay. and Sundays. It's unfortunate. Unless the Jets play a prime time where I can mm-hmm. get a chance to see them like the uh, Denver game, and we know how that went. You know, it'll be a while <laughs> before I get a chance to see them again. But looking at the highlights, a good YouTube uh, dropped the highlights from uh, the NFL uh, network, and they had 15 yeah. minutes of footage. And it felt like I actually got a chance to watch a piece of the game, sitting sitting back watching that 15 minutes and then, and then showing that uh, what uh, Wilson was doing, it was tremendous. He just looked smooth. Yep. I mean, it was like yep. every play they showed, the pocket was collapsing. He was juking people, make a miss, spinning out of there, rolling out of there, and you could just feel the energy. This kid is tremendous. This yep. kid is yep. tremendous. I, I remember, think back, when we beat mm-hmm. the Rams, Last year, I was so angry. I was, oh, you know, I was, I was just <laughs> furious and thinking that we had blown it at the time, and it felt that way before I really started doing the research on Wilson those last several months, you know, leading up to the draft. 
And then I heard Chris Sims spoke so highly of Wilson. And I heard notable names now. Joe Theismann spoke up for um for uh for Zach Wilson. I said, uh oh, there must be something to this. These these guys must have yeah. seen him play and I was very, very impressed. So then I started to look at yeah. YouTube, YouTube games of BYU and I came away he just stunned at his ability and how good he was. And what it is, he has an uncanny feel for the game that you can't teach. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I know there's structure and I know there's design, but then outside of structure and design, when things break down, the highlights of what you saw him spinning out and making people miss and rolling away from the, the pass rush and moving away from them and showing that elusiveness yep. and that, that cannon arm and accuracy is just tremendous. I feel better than I felt about the Jets being an old 40-plus year Jets fan. I'm an old Jets fan from New York. And this is the best mm. I've felt about this franchise in a long, long time. Now, I have had my concerns about the injuries. I think that's concerned me more than the, the games because I think we now we have a competent staff. We have some good football people from the GM, Joe Douglas, to uh, Robert Sala and his staff. I think we've got the right collection of people, and we finally got mm. our quarterback. I think the only way Joe can mess this up is if he takes next year's draft. He has two first-round picks, two second-round picks third and two fourth round picks. The only way he can mess this up is if he sinks early picks into luxury positions like tight yeah. end, yeah. running yeah, back, and yeah. something like that, you know? Because on my mind right yeah. now, I'm already kind of looking ahead at uh, mm-hmm. Tyler Linderbaum, Evan Neal, mm-hmm. Aquino, I think his name is Iguano, the guard who's a monster. They compared him to Makai Beckton. They said he's a Beckton-ish talent at the guard mm-hmm. position. So I'm kind of looking at the trenches. Uh, my man Kayvon Thibodeau, you know, that's, yeah. that's a guy that's been looming in the back of my mind with the Carl Lawson injuries. You know, we don't know what his status is, when we'll get him back, and what yep. condition he'll be in. Yep. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I, I, listen. I, I've I've heard those names, especially Thibodeau. I'm a guy yeah. that's very interested in bringing him to the team. I, but again, I don't want to get too far ahead. I want to stick to this season. I know oh, yeah. everybody's excited. I know people are talking about there's a lot of things he needs to do in the offseason, and we will be covering that, too. I'm year-round. Oh, yeah. For those no new, new listeners, I'm year-round. So you will be hearing oh, yeah. from me. But, there, yeah, so the there's more, going more collective this, uh, talent that we need. But I, I want to oh, yeah. talk to you about this Falcons game because you're, bring, you're bringing the oh, yeah. heat right now. This game is in London. You know, we've seen teams kind of come out. It can get kind of weird. Teams feel a little bit sluggish. How yeah, concerned yeah. are you about this Jets team? coming out sluggish in this game against uh, the Falcons in London. This would be a good test for Zach Wilson, and we'll find out if he can put together back-to-back consecutive strong performances. Because I believe Mm -hmm. if we can beat Atlanta in London, we'll be in a nice position, a very strong position, two weeks to prepare for Belichick. Then it'll really be exciting. If we can come out of there somehow, figure a way to come out of there with a win, go into the bye, Mm -hmm. we can really get the team rested and hopefully recoup from some of their injuries, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We have the two weeks to prepare for Belichick and see how Zach will do in the rematch against uh, Belichick and, and the New England Patriots. That's something I'm, I'm strongly anticipating. What about you? Yeah, I am. I'm anticipating. Well, you know, just looking forward, but I'm just this this game in London. I'm really looking to see how this defense comes out. You know, I want to see that same yeah. spark. I want to see that same fire, that same fight. Because again, a lot of Jets fans are discounting Atlanta because you know they've had their struggles. Oh. But so have we, right? And we need to start chaining things together. I know it's a big win against the Titans, but we got to stay laser, laser focused, and that's what I keep telling people. No stay doubt. Stay laser focused, stay on these guys. So no doubt. Uh, give me your final score prediction for the Jets-Falcons game. Who do you think wins? Who do you think loses? I think the Jets, they'll probably take okay. this one, I'm thinking 24-17. Ooh, and I think, think Zach will probably repeat his performance and probably score a couple of touchdowns. I can see him uh, with a couple of TD passes, and this time around a little cleaner, no picks, and not mm-hmm. too many incomplete passes. I can see him having a really good game, building on what he did uh, against the Titans, and I can see us having a lot of momentum going into New England. Yeah. So I think yeah. that's the final prediction for me. Absolutely. I hear you. That was a great prediction. Now, before I let you go, this is my final question for you really quickly, if you could. Oh, yeah. Give me your thoughts sure. on Marcus May's DUI arrest. How are you feeling about that, man? Oh, this Ready thing to move just on had me this? so frustrated and just pissed off mm-hmm. and angry because <laughs> it doesn't make sense. 
It doesn't make yeah. sense in this nowadays for anybody to go out driving drunk. I don't care. You know, once upon a time, you know, living in New York, New York, these have the pay phones and stuff, all that stuff obsolete, but everybody has some sort of device, flip phone. Yeah. Most people now have Android phones, and they have this new technology coming out. They call Z Flip and Z Fold. Mm-hmm. They're actually like Android phones that are big, like iPads, and they fold two different ways. You've got two different ones getting ready to come out. So you can fold your yeah. Android phone. You can flip it like a flip phone. You can fold it. Things are so advanced now, and they have built-in GPS because I use Lyft. Yesterday I had some uh, yeah. doctor's appointments, and I think in all I paid $25 round trip. That's not bad. I'm on twelve twelve dollars mm-hmm. and change minimum wage salary. Couldn't Marcus May, who still even if he's at the minimum, let's say league minimum is what five hundred eight hundred thousand dollars a year still, he has yep. enough money yep. and resources. He doesn't need to have to drive drunk. Nowadays everybody has an Android phone with a GPS. All you have to do is hit your hit uh, install Lyft onto your app, put your inf- card information in there. It's as easy as one two three. There's no excuse for anybody to be driving drunk. He needs to go to jail. I want to say that first off. I'm, I'm so angry at him for this dumb stuff. He needs to go to jail. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He needs to be punished for this because this don't make sense. Now he's facing civil suits. This thing's going to get yeah. so, so messy for him. This is a disaster. Yeah. Once he realizes yeah. what he's done to his career, he's done a lot of damage. He's all but a sure he's yeah. not coming back I mean, to the jet. It was, you know, shaky, you know, because of his salary and what he might be asking for. Now with his DUI, I don't think, the, the G, I don't think Joe Douglas is going to entrust him with a big contract. You know, Joe Douglas mm. is tight on them personally, which I don't blame them, because a lot of players are taking advantage of the Jets. They got paid, yeah. and they sat down. You know what I'm saying? Like Mo yep. Wilkerson, Tremaine John- uh, Johnson, and several yeah. other prospects or players that came to us. We paid them a lot of money, and they sat down on us. Joe Douglas is yeah. not going to pay Marcus May the money that he's asked for. Marcus May's career is with us is done. Mm. D- DUI oh. just put the, put the stamp on that, his career with us. That's sad and for me, and it's a shame. I thought he was going to be one of the last men standing. You know, when Le'Veon Bell got traded and, and Jamal yep. got traded, it was sad for me, you know, because we drafted these guys. Most of these guys mm-hmm. were our draft picks, and they performed as expected. They didn't disappoint. They did what we what we invested in them to do. But then some mm-hmm. of the personal conduct has really, really put a damper on it for me with some of the players. And it's sad. It's yeah. a shame. I'm really angry and really disappointed in Marcus May. Marcus May has not been a troubled player. We never heard no, about him he having any incident, nothing. I yeah, mean, nothing. literally nothing. I mean, and then all of a sudden, it, it, a DUI, this just doesn't make sense, man. Yeah, yeah. It's completely crazy. I, you know, like I, I was telling people, it's, just, it's a tough situation. And the way that, again, you know, a lot of people are wondering if it was even reported to the NFL correctly. I mean, there's going to be a lot of fallout uh-huh. when this will continue. It, but I got to get back to the my friend. I yeah. want to thank you for calling in. You have yourself a good one. Next time I have a show, I want to hear from you, all right? Yeah, sure. As soon as I get a chance to call you, I guess, um, when will your next live broadcast be? Uh, Monday, next Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday night, primetime? So, I'm going to do a show because I'm going to watch the game with everybody Sunday, and I think after that mm-hmm. it might be Friday. It might be Friday is the next show after I do the live show where I watch it, we watch the game with everybody and we do a live show after. The next one I think is okay. going to be a Friday, so I'm going to do. So. Yeah, yeah. All right. So I'm hoping Listen, I'll get a chance to catch you, catch you at some point, because most of the time Absolutely. I work from morning to late afternoon, and I don't have a chance to call in like I'd like to. But I'll be tuning in, and I do receive my notifications. My notification bell is uh, set for whenever you Thank go you. live. So I'm going to keep an eye Thank on you, and I get a chance to call. We'll talk again. Absolutely. Thank you so much. You have yourself a good night, my friend. Hey, you too, and you take care now. All right, you have a good one. So that's my guy from North Carolina, man. He calls in and he brings the heat. So much great insight for him, and he knows his Jets, man. He absolutely does. So we'll keep getting to these lines. Time's getting tight, but we'll get to everybody. So please be patient again, 515-602-9639. Next, I'm going to my guy, Jason. Jason, salute to you. I want to thank you for calling in tonight. Quickly, I need you to give me your take about this Jets upcoming game against the Falcons in London. Do you think this Jets defense will be able to get some pass rush? Um, with the Falcons offensive line, yes, I believe we were able, were able to get – the pass was going, and it all starts. It's all a demo effect. When one happens, another one's going to be coming, and then another one. 
That's how this. How, that's how we were able to get with the tie-ins. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I believe that this defense is going to be able to push the pocket as well, especially when you're seeing what we're seeing from Quincy Williams, John Franklin Myers. Quentin Williams is really wrecking shop as well. How concerned are you about, you know, this London trip kind of having the Jets come out sluggish? Do you think we'll see Zach Wilson be able to continue to kind of emulate the performance that he had against the Titans? Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's all about second. Hopefully Zach Wilson can stack. You know, I, I believe he's able to come out here. And it's not just going to be the Jets that are going to have to deal with it. The Falcons are going to have to do it too. So I think the first call is going to be slug, um, sluggish a little bit. But the rest of the course, I think it's going to be blasting. I think this is going to be a big game where it's going to be high points. Okay. Okay. So before I let you go, give me your final score prediction in this game, man. Well, like I said, it's going to be it's going to be a lot of points. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say twenty-eight thirty Jets. Ooh, twenty-eight thirty Jets. <laughs> Listen, Jason, I got to get back to these lines. I want to thank you for calling in tonight, my friend. You have a good one. You too, man. All right. Listen, Jason, calling in with fire. We'll keep getting to these lines. We've got uh, a couple more callers. You know, really quickly, we'll get you one question and ask you and see what's going on around here, man. Salutes, my guy, Jacob. I'm having you come on next. Jacob, salutes. I want to thank you for calling in tonight, man. Listen, give me your thoughts about this Jets' upcoming game against the Falcons. How concerned are you about Cordell Patterson? What's going on, Joe? Nice to talk to you again. I couldn't be happier for the way we performed against the Titans. I thought it was a great uh, balance between, you know, Zach Wilson being able to make the smart decisions and check the ball down when needed and also make those big explosive plays when, you know, that's what he's been wanting to do and it's what we've all been anticipating. And so to see it really click was just not much, not much of a better feeling in the world right now for that. And so – I think Cordero Patterson, he's obviously no Derrick Henry, but I think you can never really underestimate, um, I mean, any players on any team because if you, you know, leave them up to, you know, or you hold their standards to something that low where they're not a big deal to you, I think that's where they really start to go off. So I think we obviously need to keep him in check, uh, but I would not be as worried as him as I would about Calvin Ridley and Kyle Pitts. Okay, yeah. I, I think those guys are two great weapons as well. We discussed them tonight. Pitts especially because, again, the, the the Jets historically have issues covering tight ends. So my next and final question for you, my friend, is give me your final score prediction. Who do you think wins? Who do you think loses? How do you think this game ends up? Yeah, last week I gave the Jets a loss because I said until Zach Wilson can prove that he can really make big plays down the field, and limit the turnovers, and we win a game, I'm not going to give us the win. And we came through and won. And so with this Falcons defense being pretty bad as well as the Titans defense is, I'm going to say we get a 27-14 to 14 win. Mmm, 27-14. The lose to you, Jacob. Listen, Jacob, I got to let you go. Lines is hot. I want to thank you for calling in tonight, my friend. Next time I have a show, I want to hear from you, all right? Yeah, for sure. All right, you have a good one. Listen, Jacob calling in with the fire. Fire. Good quick calls, man. A lot of hot takes again. So I'm going to go ahead and close out the show now. I want to thank everybody for calling in tonight. This was a phenomenal show. I had a great time. Before I go, I'm going to give you my take on what I think here. Uh, you know, we're going into this game against the Falcons, and let me tell you something. This is a team, again, I'm laser focused. I'm keeping my eyes uh you look at the situation with Matt Ryan, I think our defense is going to be able to get some pressure. I do. I think John Franklin Myers, I think we'll continue to see him, you know, bring it. Quincy Williams, looking to see him continue to bring it. I think Quentin Williams is definitely going to be able to wreck shop up front. I am concerned about Cordell Patterson because of the way they utilize him. He's all over the place, right? Calvin Ridley is another guy you got to worry about. And, again, Kyle Pitts is a guy that I'm keeping my eye on. This is a guy that is a big body tight end that can make plays. They just got this young kid in, and he's doing his thing down there. I'm also looking at this, this Falcons defense. I'm not as scared about them. Now, I am concerned about Fowler, all right? Our offensive line has been shaky at times. But he's a guy that I think if we can kind of neutralize him, especially if Mike LaFleur, okay, gets it together with his blocking scheme and we attack early, Okay, if we attack early, um, especially offensively, uh, I, I think that we can be all right. I, I really do think that we can be all right. 
so I'm taking the New York Jets. I'm taking the New York Jets. 24 to 10, I'm taking the New York Jets. Yeah, I'm taking the Jets, man. So, you know, again, we're going to close out the show. I want to thank everybody for calling. Listen, I'm the man of the people. I'm here for the people. Let me shamelessly promote my Facebook page. Everybody go on Facebook. Search The Long Beach Joe Show. Like that page. My content's up there. Go ahead and give it a listen. Message me. I'll message you right back. I love going back and forth with folks about this football team. Also, leave me some feedback. I love hearing about what you folks think I do here on The Long Beach Joe Show. I'm also on Twitter as well at YoungJ000. Again, YoungJ000. Go ahead and follow me. I'll follow you right back. You want to troll me? No issues. I'm the troll that lives under the bridge, and I will have my Vera Tucker jersey on at all times, okay? At all times. You see what Vera Tucker is doing out there? That's the way those Trojans roll. Fight on. You know what I'm saying? So I have my Vera Tucker jersey on at all times, all right? Also, at the Long Beach Joe on Twitter as well. Uh, you can follow me across there, too. Uh, you know, that's the show's page. Again, all the content is up there. Everything's up there. I'm also on YouTube as well at Long Beach Joe Jets. Long Beach Joe Jets on YouTube. Uh, you know, Long Beach Joe Jets is on YouTube. Go ahead and subscribe. Turn on your notifications. Uh, you know, so when you subscribe, if you turn on your notifications, you'll get all the content. Also, please give the stream a thumbs up as well, as well, and share the stream if you could, too. You know, so, uh, you know, thank you guys so much for everybody that's subscribing, everybody that's over there. And as always, people, when you see me in person, because you will see me in person, okay, it is arms out, chest open, free hugs for everyone. Free hugs for everyone. The hugs will cost you absolutely nothing. I want to thank you folks for listening and calling in. Without you people, I'm absolutely nothing. Thank you for taking the times out of your day to call in and listen to the show. And as well, like I tell everybody before I go, I am wearing pink Please, if you could, stop by all of my social media platforms. Check out my fundraiser for the Susie G. Coleman Foundation. We are bringing the fight to breast cancer. Anything that you can give, a dollar, two dollars, whatever you can give is greatly appreciated. All right, folks? So, again, I want to thank you folks for listening. You folks have a good one. Peace. (laughs) 